completely right. mischaracterize <laughs> Aang. Um, yeah. Like in one of his flashbacks, which is great. We love that. Um, wasn't there a, a bunch of like hubbub in the background though? Cause like they, there were like certain characters that were deemed, I guess, like toxic or whatever that were changed. And then the showrunner who I think worked on the original, didn't he leave pretty early on in production as well? Am I mistaken? We're still talking about Avatar here? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You okay. might be slightly overestimating everybody's level of knowledge about Avatar. I yeah. hit the go live button, by the way, since we started talking. Uh, I, I thought it. Yeah, you you um, really you really had some faith there that we weren't gonna. <laughs> well, that was yeah. a solid thirty seconds of us not completely screwing you over forever. I know, but I like I like living on the edge, and also I've just watched the first two episodes of Avatar, so I need something to wake me up again. Um, so that, <laughs> that 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 sort of thrill of will vex or will vex not say the n word in the first ten seconds. <laughs> Exactly they did it to me on efap but it wasn't like i it wasn't like i said like any slurs or anything but i was like quoting a joke from somebody else and that was the first thing that was said and everyone was like he stole that joke i was like i wasn't supposed to be in the stream i was i didn't know thanks <laughs> <laughs> it's also a test of the guests it's like how how i like chat to see what sort of degenerate people are like behind the scenes when they think the camera isn't on them how bad and disgusting are they really? So we always get a nice sort of 30 to 40 seconds at the beginning of these where you are seen in your full and unvarnished glory. And I think you've acquitted yourself very well so far today. Um, so congratulations. Um, I'm just I'm just as cringy live as I am in private. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can I can dial up a little bit of the controversy. I think my dial has gone 15 percent gay, 85 percent straight because I saw oh. pictures of Rebecca Ferguson at the Dune 2 London premiere. Yeah, she's hot. <laughs> I, I, oh my goodness. She's I, got that like timeless hotness too. Like as she gets older, she stays the same level of hot. It's pretty cool. Well, I'm just thinking like, I was just <laughs> mm -hmm. always kind of like, okay, she's she's a beautiful actress, like, of, like standard wise. But I, all the roles I've seen her in feel to do like a disservice to her. Um, especially like Silo. I feel like Silo really did a disservice to her. And then I saw that dump truck at the London premiere. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh. Interesting. <laughs> oh, things are stirring down there. Oh, oh no. <laughs> you get it now. I get it now. I really <laughs> that, get it now. Is that how it works for women? Things stir down there? Is there oh, even yes, anything yes, to stir? Yes. Think about it like a clock and the gears working. You know, oh. things start to get going when so suddenly the gears just start turning. And it's like mechanical in how all the juices flow from there. There you go. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. Women are robots. <laughs> confirmed. confirmed. It has been confirmed. I actually haven't. So I, I wrote uh, the, I usually start with the uh, portrayal section of my reviews because it's the easiest, the, it's the easiest one for me to do. And I got to Rebecca Ferguson. And I was like, now nah, I'm going to take a break because I thought she was in Dune too, which I've seen everybody. I think she uh, does an amazing job. And I will not spoil anything. Don't worry. I will not. I have a I gun on your head. Do not <laughs> say anything. Well, it's not like she was bad in the first part. So no, but I, she really stepped. Honestly, every actor really stepped it up in this one. It was like almost because I I'm not a big Dune person. So I had watched the first one very like right, but almost directly before I watched the second one. And it wasn't a bad movie, but it was to me, it was a lot of setup and you know, the, it almost felt like the, a lot of the actors hadn't really 100% clicked yet. They all click in this one, especially Timoth Timothy Chalamet. Uh, I just wish he would have put on a little bit more muscle, but he he owns it in this. In, in, well, he's in supposed to be like 15 years twink. old, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, like his character, Paul, is, is 15 in the books. So, yeah, because I was wondering, too, like he in the first one, he looks so like tiny and lanky. And like, it's funny. It was like, when was it Jason Momoa's character? Oh, he put on some muscle. It's like, huh. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, not really. I think but that, that was I, the one and only joke in the entire film, wasn't it? I think. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, to be fair, that I looked up and it's supposed to be a fifteen-year-old kid. I'm like, oh, okay, that that makes sense. Yeah, but I mean, they still he, he a fifteen-year-old could still put on a decent amount of muscle. I just I I think it would have been cool if they would have done like the Toby Maguire thing, but like as it went along, he just kind of got got a little bit more muscular every so often because it's supposed to be. There's a lot of time jumps for the for it it goes here 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 throughout the movie so like if every time they jumped by like a few weeks or whatever 
if he was just a little bit more imposing. But I bearing think that in been... mind, he's living in a desert where the only food is shrubs and there's no available protein powder or yeah. protein generally. It's a very the vegan f- diet. Lots of chickpeas. Vegan gains. Um, if anything, it, it's surprising that he hasn't completely wasted away and drifted off on the winds. Uh, on, so... on top of that, in real life, he's dating Kylie Jenner, so any weight he oh. might put on is sucked out of him to put in her ass. <laughs> I think I think they <laughs> broke up, didn't they? But it's still no. it's still far too late. I think it, just having been there even once, even if they have now broken up, is he's now solid for life, uh, soiled yep. even for life mm-hmm. for me. Um, yeah, well, well, I guess we might as well talk a bit about June since it's at the top of our, our title. It's one of us has so far seen it. That is darker. I am seeing it on Thursday. I've actually there's a double um, back to back thing. So for, for, I don't think I've ever been to a midnight premiere before, but I will be going all the way into London, which I fucking hate, in order to see <laughs> June part one and then June part two straight after it in the same cinema with a half hour break in between. So I'll be catching the midnight premiere of June part two which I'm kind of looking forward to, but then it does mean I have to survive in London and somehow get all the way back when the film finishes at 4am, which will be good. Um, but I'm sure it'll be possible. You know, I, I yeah, might die. If we're not back next week, then I'm dead. <laughs> Make sure to bring lots of cash for all those congestion not sh- charges. <laughs> not shot, sorry. Stabbed with a yeah, giant stabbed. sword. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, how do we how do we want to take this then? So, for for those of us who haven't seen, obviously, Dark Arrow said that he was quite impressed by it. Um, anyone not looking forward to this? Anybody disinterested by it? Anybody got trepidations for it, or is everybody by and large on the same page? From my, uh, I think I'm, that, Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that I think I'm probably the least excited, but not in a uh, not in a negative way. Like I just caught the first Doom for the first time a couple of weeks ago and I had no clue about it whatsoever. So um, uh, I thought it was pretty good. So mm-hmm. looking forward to the second one. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not like uh, super hot on it. Like a lot of people seem to be. Um, yeah. But maybe I will be after the second one because I've got some I will tell things. you this, my theater packed. I'm 100%, sure. Yeah, yeah. IMAX, 100% good. every seat taken. It was it was a, it was a cool coming right uh, coming off of Madam Web where I was literally the only person in the entire theater to the next movie I see within <laughs> what ten days and it's the exact opposite experience which is pretty damn cool. No, I re- I really like the first Dune so I've I've kind of been waiting with bated breath almost I'm probably gonna watch it right when it's available out here but I definitely didn't appreciate like the setup feeling of it like there's not really an Act Three of Part One. Like it just sort of yeah. kind of ends when everything's mm-hmm. getting going, and it's like, okay, part two better be really, really good, or I'm going to be very later, disappointed. Andrew. But yeah, bye, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> bye. <laughs> he, he was so disgusted with your with your take there that there so was, was like, how dare you, how dare you criticize the plot structure. He actually said it in the private chat behind. He said he's going to reset his internet because his internet it's, is being cringe. Being and I was like, well, cringe. yeah, but according. And the whole chat would say that it's it's Andrew being cringe, but you know, fuck it, his for internet's real, real. being cringe today. Oh, he's back! Yay! Hope he didn't catch that insult. Welcome back. <laughs> what? We hey, what did y'all Andrew. say about me? I'm going back. We were in saying the that the, that we just improved the stream so much. Oh my <laughs> god! Wait, I just noticed the mustache is back. Yay! It's been, it's been back. Return Has of it... the molestash. <laughs> Back to the movie, though. I, I sort of agree with you, amateur analyst, that the uh, the way that the first one does end is a bit abrupt. Uh, it's because it's the halfway point of the book, so it, it's going to have that feeling of a, of an abrupt ending. Yeah, but like with something like Lord of the Rings, just comparatively, like the two towers had a, sort of a definitive ending. Like the Fellowship had an ending. Like there was a climactic part. There was a bit of falling action, if you can call it that. Like there wasn't really a like a very defined climactic section of Dune Part One. At least it didn't feel like it. We got that. We sort of got that fight between him and, gosh, I I don't know any of the lore and I forget all the names of all the factions or whatnot. But he's like fighting with the desert people and you know he gets that kill and it's it's all very well done. But like, I don't know. I just felt like I needed more to make it feel like a complete sort of film but don't worry I it, it will feel it will feel complete at the end of this one for okay you. I, I actually had a, a different opinion of one i thought it worked like yes it it left the ending open that there was going to be more story but i would have been perfectly fine if it ended there because it did feel like a whole movie 
um, on its own. I, I like I, f- I felt all the elements came together very well. There was enough of a universe built there that like, yeah, I could just kind of like let my imagination wander if nothing else happened. But I was I was OK with it. Um, I didn't think it, it felt incomplete. I'd, like maybe incomplete's the wrong word. It just, I I would have liked a more like a bigger climax. Gig, unresolved, like yeah. yeah, like it did feel kind of unresolved. I don't know. It's like wait, like I'm so used to stuff like Lord of the Rings or whatever, and and uh, you know, coming off of Marvel where half of their movies are setups for the next movie, it just it kind of bugged me a little bit. But like I love gotcha. everything else about it. Like the VFX are amazing. The sound design is amazing. All the actors are really good in it. Even Chalamet, which even Momoa, which I didn't expect, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, and, uh, I didn't. Expect I really, that yeah, an unpopular opinion. I think I mm-hmm. think this is one of Hans Zimmer's best soundtracks. Even though it's not orchestral, I think it's really creative. Yeah, and yeah, he's I in a element really for this one, isn't it? I mean, the, the, his element is soundscape as opposed to soundtrack, and so when he gets to do all the atmospheric stuff and all of the various sort of cultural bits and pieces, so you have the uh, uh, the Atreides with the bagpipes, it, that all fits the world it's in. It's it's more, much more diegetic soundtrack making than than you're used to seeing from someone like john williams in most cases i find it really annoying because there's nothing to latch on to but i do think it did work for dune um i'm with you on on it feeling slightly incomplete i think if i hadn't known that part two was coming i don't think it would have been anything like a satisfying film and like i was i don't think i was even on youtube at the time but if i had been i wouldn't have reviewed it anyway just because it felt like such an incomplete story which it is because it is halfway through the first book as has been mentioned um you leave with them going off into the desert before stuff actually really kicks off uh, so you wait until stuff actually kicks off, and then you say, "Well, okay, that's the complete work." It's it, you can't really do a six-hour film, which is a shame. But I, that's why I'm going to try and see them back to back. It's just because I think it's it's much harder than the Lord of the Rings to watch one and then two as though they are actually self-contained separate entities because they are so structurally connected. Um, yeah, they which, are. But like, I guess the point I was trying to make was just like, there's no big epic battle sequence, or you know, like. Yeah, you get a character death, but like it just it doesn't feel textbook like a climactic section. I don't know. It just I mean, you basically get the space red wedding, so that that's pretty much the climax of the, of the first one. <laughs> yeah, pretty well. But uh yeah, like going back to the music for sure, like when you watch the behind the scenes, Hans Zimmer looks like a kid in a candy store when he's making the stuff. It's like <laughs> this is like my favorite thing to do. I'm so excited. It's like yeah. I read that he just sat in the desert for a week while he was conceptualizing the soundtrack for this film, which I thought was pretty cool. And uh, also, because he filmed it during lockdowns, his daughter literally went crazy from the amount of bagpipes that were being played in his house. <laughs> <laughs> I believe he was it. Sick and tired of her, she was sick and tired of hearing the Bez- Bene Gesserit uh, theme, which is just whispering Bene Gesserit over and over again. Anybody who's yeah. ever been to a police funeral or an Irish funeral, an Irish wedding... Yes, you. It will yeah. drive you nuts. <laughs> Eventually, yeah. Or Scottish, I guess a Scottish wedding would be the same too. The sound design is really good as well, because like the the thumper in the movie, like they took like six microphones and just like shoved them into like the desert, and just oh. like recorded everything and like hit mm-hmm. like pieces of wood on top of like wooden posts in the desert uh, with mallets. Uh, a lot of yeah, I had read something about that. Design. Yeah, interesting. Huh. And then there's sand screens. I guess it's just it's like a black key instead of a different color or whatnot. So they pick up all the little bits of sand that's actually caught on set and then it bleeds into the background very nicely. And just the amount of like desert footage that they're compositing in it just it makes it feel like a sci fi. Like you're actually on a different planet somewhere or a different galaxy. Like just they really nailed that. And for someone like me, I, I really appreciate stuff like mm-hmm. that. So mm-hmm. I, I like love the- Dune One. The glass in the movie is, isn't CG, and that's usually glass in movies. A lot of glass is just CG after the fact because they don't want to deal with like, uh, like the lens being in the reflection. Mm-hmm. Um, but this, like the the uh, the ornithopter with the yellow uh, glass, that's all like real glass. All the glass is real, so it feels very tactile. Yeah, um, they feel lived. Flying, and they like, feel like sand is hitting it. Yeah. Yeah. And even like when you look like I know, I know way too much about aircraft not being a pilot. It's just one of my weird, <laughs> weird obsessions. But like even when you look at like the glass on the cockpit and like the readouts and all the instruments and stuff, it all looks like a functioning vehicle that that uh, that's had use, you know, and like you get that when they're flying through the sandstorm, 
you know, he can fold the wings back and glide across. It's, it's, it's so cool. It's all these little details that they didn't, they didn't have to do, but they did. And it, it just makes for a cooler sci-fi, I think. <clears throat> I I say, the, the thing I'm very interested in, I guess, is because I, I went in obviously having read the books a cu at least a couple of times. They're not some of my favorites, but I'm reasonably familiar with them. Um, and having gone back as well now to start rereading them in preparation for part two is how much of the world building is actually intelligible to somebody who hasn't read the book because there were some quotes from oh, I'm going to get the name wrong Denis Villeneuve French Villeneuve the French yeah where's the French reviewer when you need yeah him? where's yeah, the French we need him just just to do French pronunciation but I think there were quotes out from him today when he was talking about how he dislikes using dialogue in film um oh, he believes yeah. that it's it's more uh, a theatrical uh, nature it works in television and and he's much more minimalist which he is and that does come across in what he does but if you compare that he, he's almost the opposite type of creator to, to frank herbert i mean if you go back and just the first 10 15 pages of dune it's all exposition and it's all dialogue and in fact you will quite frequently you'll have a dozen pages which are just one long dialogue exchange explaining some minute part of the world or some part of the plot it's very heavy on exposition and dialogue so picking to do it is is a strange choice and i'm wondering how much for people who've never read the books i'm assuming there's at least a couple of you here who haven't how much I of have. the world building stuff really does come through in this film like do you know what the benny jesserit are properly it, do you know what the spacing guild is by the time i was done with the second film uh, yes, a lot a lot of it did start to make sense. The first movie felt very overwhelming. I was I immediately as soon as I was done with it, I'm going to have to I was like, I'm going to have to watch this again. Uh, there's I missed probably half of the stuff that they were trying to explain. Mm -hmm. uh, but I I didn't rewatch it. I, I just went clean in. I was like, I watched it once. I'm going to watch the second movie. And they they double back on a lot of stuff. You kind of get through context clues. You'll kind of figure things out. Uh, explanations that aren't necessarily direct explanations are are done pretty well. Uh, I feel like I got a, a decent enough handle on what was going on. Uh, I would still like to would like I would love to know more. I may actually go and read some of the books. I've heard that this the first six are really the ones you're supposed to pay attention to because it's the original author. Um, but yeah, that's I, I felt mm. that it came through pretty well uh, through the whole narrative. Hmm. What about for people who've only seen part one so far? I mean, so Vex, if, if you are you familiar with the source material stuff? Like how much of the world building stuff comes through? Uh, I am not familiar with the novels, but I did just order the first three. So I'll be reading those next month. Um, but in terms of world building in the first one, I think it lays the foundation pretty well. Like on the second, I'm going through my second rewatch right now and I'm picking up like a lot more details that I missed the first time. So like the, oh my God, the Benny Jenna <laughs> Jesser. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, so I, I kind of missed, like, I picked up from context clues what it was, but I missed <laughs> that, like, these are intentionally people that kind of are pro produced, I guess, to sway, like, political leanings and outcomes and all of that stuff, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then just watching through everything else unfold in the introduction of, like, the Har Har Harkonnen? Harkonnen? Harkonnen. Um, Harkonnen. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, you can, it's it sets up how tense everything is, I think, really well in the first one. In terms of, like, Denny's quote, I feel like it's, okay, well, first he's French and second he's Canadian, so that explains some of it. But also, I, he's, from what Shots I've seen fired. from him, <laughs> self-inflicted damage. <laughs> uh, he's, he's more of a visual uh, filmmaker, I find. So, like, reading those quotes, I feel like it's just him more trying to justify the style that he's comfortable in and that he's been able to flourish in. Cause I, when I think of arrival or Cesar Cesario or, um, Oh my God, what else has he done? Prisoners. Uh, yeah. Prisoners. There we go. It's all a lot of visual storytelling, regardless of what genre it is. So I can almost like let him get away with those comments. Uh, but like, yeah, also, you know, Quebec people, you know, they're fucking idiots a lot of the time too. So his comments are so bizarre too because like he's criticizing like saying that tv destroyed cinema but like dialogue started in cinema before tv existed so i just don't understand his comments about that like at That's all why especially because some of those movies pre-fucking tv have some of the most quotable and most memorable lines in movie history so i like i don't understand that yeah that line of thinking 
he's not like a slave to it and he's not like black and white about it obviously but mm -hmm. still it was really weird just to see a director say that it is and i wonder if that's more just influenced by what has recently been happening with television because we've seen a pretty steady decline across all boards in the quality of television more than you know some of the classic television that have shaped entertainment altogether but well maybe he just watched the uh, first episode of the last airbender you take dialogue <laughs> after that yeah. and he was like <laughs> <laughs> the television is a plague. Maybe he watched <laughs> Madam Web and was like, uh, movies can be a lot better without dialogue, I think, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> I, I would love to see a Madam Web cut where it's just like piano music and like it cuts to a black screen. It's like, ow, and stuff like like old school. Uh, well, actually, then we, we wouldn't be able to get like awesome lines like, uh, you know, you did not know today was the day you were going to die. They can still put that up. <laughs> it just has to be part of the... <laughs> Uh, the one thing I actually was thinking about, since we're talking about TV versus movies and, and all that, is I wonder if film wasn't necessarily the best medium for this particular story because of what we were just saying, how there is a lot of details that can get lost in the translation. I understand that you want to have the big spectacle of the IMAX screens and the huge desert and all the explosions. I love, I get that, but I do wonder if they would have done this in a Game of Thrones esque style you know, good Game of Thrones, at least, uh, HBO series, sort of. Uh, I mean, in theory, it would work better that way. And I know Princess Fiona, who's often in the chat, I think, has said that the, uh, I can't remember which network did do a TV adaptation. Was it HBO? Uh, Sci-Fi. Sci-Fi Sci did it. It was like a three-episode one. I would, uh, I mean, she, she's quite closely familiar with June and thinks, I think, <laughs> unless I'm misquoting her, that that's the best of the versions that there have been. And you can yeah, you can easily see why because there's so much and I, I I could be wrong I think Frank Herbert has a, an influence on George R R Martin as well and you you can see the similarities in the way the worlds are constructed in the 100%. sense that you have the most but this is one of the other things I was interested in how much of this comes through in this recent two films is that how much of the background politics between the many houses and the the Imperium and the Landsrad which controls it and that that sort of tripartite uh, collapsing. Uh, system which which is very very well I say well explored it's it's very detailed in the way it's explored in the books and I don't recall seeing too much of that beyond that there are these people called the Harkonnens and there are these people called the uh, uh, the Atreides and there's an emperor how much of that otherwise comes through whereas if it was as you were saying like a TV miniseries then you'd have a lot more time to really explore a lot of this stuff um, so what we're getting is a minimalist adaptation because probably by necessity it's a it's a feature film. For what is adapted, though, again, I don't know the source material, um, but again, everything comes through clearly. And this is a conversation I was having with Tom has some thoughts as well, because he was really meh on the first one. Um, but I also wonder if this is where people need to kind of understand that things don't translate necessarily the same way. So like while from what I've heard, I can understand Dune would work better as a like a Game of Thrones television series. I feel like there's too many uh, interests at stake for a television series running over X amount of weeks versus uh, a movie by that's written and, and directed by basically a single man who's proven himself to kind of be a visionary and lead the way for it, right? Um, also, I can see how a lot of these like little subplots, and, like world details can be muddled as well because people will want to interpret it different ways, right? Like that black chick in Dune 1 is apparently race and gender swapped. Yes. which um i just learned today so there's just there's more room for that kind of shit uh to happen as well with tv yeah i did see that it's like based on the sisters or something oh i can't oh, remember yeah. what the title is yeah well that's that's another option as well isn't it if the, the films are incredibly successful then it spins off into tv adaptations which fill in like broader parts of the world and there, there is so much world stuff that you can throw in i, I probably I actually, I think I did stop after book three because it becomes steadily kind of worse from that point World as he takes time. progressively. He progress. He takes many, many more drugs toward the end of his time, and um, <laughs> it tells. You can really tell. Worm time. <laughs> yeah, I've, ne I've never really. Well, I tried reading the books like as a teenager. I have them. I just I haven't gotten to them. I'm a, I'm a bad reader, but um, you can't be worse than me. I've never completed a book. Oh, okay. Any book? Oh. No. Uh, ev any book? Well, comic what book. about a magazine? No, I've never completed a novel. I always get bored by the end, and I'm just like, eh. What about like Dr. Seuss? Well, that's, <laughs> that's not a novel. 
<laughs> oh, that's a hey, that's a novel. Yeah. Don't 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 shit on my boy Dr. Seuss. He made incredible <laughs> works of art. It's a that's novella. How to read, man. <laughs> Um, but, uh, like not knowing very much about the source material at all, uh, other than watching the original movie, I don't know how accurate that one is either, but, um, a lot of the world building stuff, like it gives you the sense that you want to know more because it, everything's sort of like touched upon, but never really fully explained. So like, it just seems like there's this gigantic expansive universe that just, you know, you're waiting to look into, but like, you know, you, you definitely get. <laughs> you definitely get like the sense that like you understand the tension between the different factions obviously you understand like the overreaching I, it's, it's an empire right yeah um it's definitely a, like, it's it's essentially the same style empire uh, as game of thrones where there's the overarching emperor and then he uh, below him are these houses that have essentially say in what's going on but he's the final decision yeah. maker that's what i got gathered at least yeah, so I think it does a pretty good job at like, you know, setting up sort of like what you would normally expect in like a film adaptation as far as world building goes. But yeah, I mean, I, I should probably read the novels. I actually have them. So oh. the only, yeah, they're just sitting on a shelf of like all these books that I have that I just don't read. <laughs> 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 kind of habit of mine. Um, how is the, the tone shift uh, between one and two? dark hour because again like one is very it's a little more subtle it just is laying down the foundation oh but... it's there the subtlety for the most part is is thrown out the window for the second part oh. it definitely they definitely go big and bold by, by the end it's it i don't want to give away plot points but the it is, i'm going to try to do this best i can the as like battles and stuff happen which i'm sure you anybody who's ever watched any sci-fi can figure that part out uh they just they get more bombastic as it goes along and uh -huh. timothy chalamet he like chew like he just gets so into the character by the end it's it, you can't i wanted to go and fight for arrakis by the end it was like holy shit this guy's getting me amped up like i can't i gotta go he, it, the, his speeches and like the moments where he has to like be a leader are so good so okay. there definitely he, there's definitely an evolution as it goes along from that more subtle, like you were saying, everything's kind of subdued to over the top and in a great way too. I mean, over the top in a, in a very good way. I, if That's I, if kind I, if, of hmm? interesting because oh, like if there's if there's one of the problems I think you know because some problems will always stem from the thing that you're adapting, so you can't blame necessarily a film if it's being faithful to a book and the book itself is flawed. And I always thought one of the big problems with the Dune books is kind of by necessity because they are presented as these grand world historical type accounts more than they are character driven plot driven story the one of the things that makes it quite unlovely as a book and also as a film is that paul atreides isn't a very strong character like his his place in the universe is incredibly important and the events he's a part of are incredibly important but as an actual person through whose eyes you see and who you hear speak like he's he's always struck me as a kind of a not blank protagonist, he's just not, none of the characters particularly in it from the books are that memorable. And that was what I thought they were doing with part one in that you come away from it and you think that that's clearly really well made um, and the production values are great and it's intriguing and it's not treating the audience like fools, but can you actually look at a character and say, I really resonate with that person? And I couldn't really name a single person in part one that you could. So it sounds like from what you're saying that they kind of correct that in part two. Uh, so yeah, I was Duncan I Idaho. I was gonna say, that's I resonate better. with Duncan Idaho. <laughs> He's uh, so cool. do, do you resonate or does your character? vagina resonate? Uh, both do. <laughs> uh, I would say that there's a, a very distinct point in the film where the switch does get flipped. And he's very similar in the beginning to what he was in the first movie. But there is a spot where he becomes less of that blank slate, you're saying, and becomes uh, starts to have his own... Uh, I, I don't know which word I'm looking for, but it, it definitely it changes. Mm -hmm. That's Probably all for the best. You don't want to have yeah. like the same tone. Well, you want to have a similar tone, but like you don't want it to feel like the same sort of pacing, same sort of feel no, all the way through. No, Brownie, I will not spoil it. I swear. I'm, that's <laughs> why I'm taking my time between statements and like I was gonna trying say to. <laughs> I'm not just spoiling everything out. Shot. 
It's a good thing I haven't seen it. I would definitely slip something. <laughs> no, that's why. That's why that. I'm trying to like every time I'm like, okay, let me think about this a little bit before I say something. You know? It could be worse. I spoiled Godzilla minus one for people on open bar because I didn't realize that it wasn't out in all the American theaters at that point. So I was like, oh yeah, at the end, the bit where he kamikazes into its mouth, and by that point, the film is only out <laughs> in like a quarter he of the country. Pulls a Mando. That's crazy. <laughs> Maybe we should develop a code word so, like, you know, Paul can be cupcake, and the Emperor can be Coke, and it murder is is chips. So you know, when when Paul chips the cupcake, no, that doesn't work. Fuck it. Um, yeah, yeah, you've given that formula already. If, if I if I would have to give it uh, some a negative, uh, because of the nature of the story itself and how many characters there are and how many subplots there are. Sometimes you don't get as much of a character as you would like, so just go into I'm not going to say which ones, but there are some characters that I wish would have got more screen time. Which ones? Okay, okay. I mean, I can say which ones, that's fine. Um, I ones. wish Josh Brolin I wish Josh oh, Brolin would have got way more screen time. Uh, the uh, Vex's uh, profile picture, I would uh, her, uh, her, her avatar, I wish would have got more screen time. I felt like he was uh, kind of underdeveloped. That's uh, Fade Ralpher, isn't it? Yeah, I, I didn't remember his how to pronounce his name. Um, Batista, Dave Batista, the other, the other Harkonnen kind of, uh, disappears halfway through the movie. Uh, it's a little weird. Uh, they almost kind of flip flop, like, like, like once one en exits, the other enters kind of. And I don't know if that gotcha. was the way it was in the book, uh, or if they just didn't want to have both storylines going at the same time. Uh, but there, there is some character, like those are some characters I wish I would have saw a little bit more of. Scar, yeah. Scar, does he get good? screen time in the second uh he gets or? decent screen time i would say probably about the same amount if a little bit more than the first one it's but he's since he's kind of like an immobile fat yeah. guy like he doesn't what's he really gonna do he just kind of has scenes where like kind of in the first movie for the most part where it's it's a lot of talky scenes he, it's yeah. gotcha. he, i also found it kind of crazy how much of that isn't cg how much how much costume and makeup and stuff there is Involving that yes. character, like, yeah, oh, he actually, like, seven hours in this he was in makeup for that for that get up and everything, which is crazy. I figured it, they would all just they would CG it, but no, he no. spent the time. He's like <laughs> covered in impressive. oil. He's in like this oil bath, and it's like, oh wow. Okay. Oh, and I would that's have loved. Gross. By the way, I would have loved to see more of the Emperor, but that's only because it's Christopher Walken, and I wish he had more lines because you can tell he's trying not to be Christopher Walken at some points. <laughs> and Walken's in that. That's excellent. Yeah. So <laughs> Then and, does this set up like a third film pretty well? Because Denny's also come out, I think, today or yesterday. Yeah, I mean, there is definitely set up for a third film. If they wanted to leave it at this, they probably could. If like they just decided for some reason it tanks and they're not going to do it, it's it, it it's it's pretty well done. Where it's I would I would compare it to the original Star Wars ending, where it's like okay, this could be the end, or we could expand on this if we like. Yeah, there's no way this is going to tank though. No, it's not going to. No. It's, it's got too much hype behind it. It's getting a lot of good word of mouth already, yeah. you know. And well, the first looks, movie had a lot of good word of mouth. Mm -hmm. it, I, you know, that's so if I, if I had to say the first movie was like probably like a in the B range, maybe like a B minus. Like this one's definitely in the A range. Like it's oh, definitely good. a jump up. Uh, whether nice. or not it's that uh, Empire Strikes Back level of jump, I time will. I'd have to see it again and kind of you know because I don't like to do that in the prisoner of the moment. But I had a hell of a time. I the the time flew by like it's uh, two hours forty six minutes, and about an hour and a half in, I looked at my because I was looking at my phone taking notes, and I realized how far in I was, and I was like, it didn't feel like that. I felt like I was maybe at, like forty minutes in, so it doesn't feel like th almost three hours, which is great. Yeah, because uh, Denis is known for like kind of having a bit unconventional pacing. I'm not gonna say it's bad. But he definitely takes his time to like smell the roses along the way, which you either appreciate or you don't. But the first movie did feel kind of slow in some places, which definitely hurts the rewatchability. But yeah, if you're saying it's an A, I mean, I'm excited. And there's no way it's going to tank. Like, there's it's it's basically got no competition. Right no, now. yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, well, that was going to be my question: is sort of the, the box office predictions for this film because part one it broke even, didn't it? I think, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know that it made a huge amount of money. I can't. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head what the numbers were. I have to look that up. Um, I, I can it came out you. during uh, lockdown, didn't it? It, it did. Like, I think it was didn't right it go to streaming as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a vague feeling it's in the ballpark of like 150 million budget and 250 million. Uh, gross, but I could be wrong. No, yeah. so it was 165. Uh, yeah, 434, 165 million budget. 
That's crazy. So, it's, it's I would say I would honestly say that this, this could this might be able to double that only because this if, that's, if that's how much it if that's how much it made during a way closer true. to lockdowns, I think it could easily double that. Yeah, I mean, this one's got a bigger budget, hasn't it? Didn't this budget go up to two hundred and ten? I want to say two ten. I think I'm excited it's excited for that because the first one looks really, really good. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, this one. Budget, make it the, look the effects. I know that it, a lot of people give shit for a lot of CG overuse of CG. Uh, I this is the first time in a long time I was like they did it right. I love that they did the way they use the, their their resources. There is some practical effects, obviously, like we mentioned, but I would say it's probably skewed heavily towards CG, and it doesn't look bad. It it like it, it you obviously can tell. Like, obviously, they're not really getting pelted with uh, huge sandstorms and stuff, and there's no like you know the sandworms don't really exist. But it's done extremely it. well. I know. I'm you I'm made upset, the though. worms, man. <laughs> I want to ride it. Did you get but one of the it, cups? <laughs> I did not. I did not. They're like twenty five dollars, and I was like, oh, for the meme, cups I'm not going to do it. I'm not doing it for the meme. Even like, Denise saw it, and he's like, "What the actual fuck is that?" I have a <laughs> yeah. Don't be shocked if they're trying to get rid of those after uh, like a few weeks after it's out of theaters. You might oh, now they're going to be worth real money in the future. I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, it's exclusive. Remember those weird fleshlight cups <laughs> <laughs> yeah i, I was just believe they a did quick that. look the so the part yeah, the part two budget is 190 million cynic is better with box office stuff than i am is the website box office pro a reliable guide because they're predicting 125 to 195 million domestic for like a worldwide opening or that is that like their domestic opening prediction? domestic Opening weekend, 50 to 75. Domestic total range, 125 to 195. Oh, wow. I would say that's off. I'd say that's low. That's very I think that's low, too. Yeah. Yeah, the other one's still cleared 100 million, even with its dual release on HBO Max and um, during, you know, is like post-COVID. So, um, yeah, that's hyper conservative, I'd say. Especially because, like, I think people left the last Dune um, and this was just a perception I had as an outsider. Like I had no, no stakes in the game at all. I just saw the movie. So, um, it seemed like people saw the potential of what the next one can be. Like that one was really competently done and they really enjoyed it. So, uh, the fact that it still made enough, like it didn't make any money. Uh, I think someone said in the chat, they pretty much nailed it. Like it didn't make any money, but it also didn't lose any money. And that's because it was on streaming too. This yeah. one's gonna make money, even though it has a higher budget. So, um, billion I'd actually, dollars. I, like, billion. I, don't know. <laughs> I think it, I think it can get close. I don't think it, it'll it'll. Cross oh, I don't think it'll hit a billion, but um, eight eight fifty, hundred billion. I think eight fifty is is it can make that. I think that's the high end. I think maybe the low end probably about like seven hundred. I think I, I legitimately believe that too. That's not just go. me trying to like put put a range out there to be the one to win. Like I I think once the the word of mouth starts going, it's gonna it's gonna take off. I think it's gonna make money, but it's definitely not gonna blow the world away or break any records because sci-fi typically doesn't do that well, like mm -hmm. financially. Well, I think I think the thing is people are desperate for good sci-fi. Yeah. Um. Because like, what was the movie that came out? Oh, the creator. The yeah. creator looked good, but it wasn't good sci-fi. Um, yeah, it didn't make any sense. Um, it was a beautiful film, but it like I like I watched that and I'm like, I really wish this was like a video game or something. Like, <laughs> I wish I could fact, like do something in this world rather they, than just sit here. This, the fact that this can, this is coming out so essentially right in the middle of the range where Rebel Moon is having its little bout, mm. it's gonna make that look even worse. So it's uh, mm -hmm. there. I, I don't think it's that people don't want to see sci-fi because you were saying it, make, it has trouble making money. It's I agree with Andrew is that you it needs to be good sci-fi. Yeah, uh, I I have a friend who I I took him to see the first Dune when it came out because uh, it was during lockdown and we were all just like ah we want to go see a movie let's go see Dune and he was he and on first watch he hated it he didn't like it at all. Um, and then he watched it yesterday. Um, and then while I was rewatching Dune, he called me and he's like, I just watched it. 
I understand now. This is peak. <laughs> uh, and he like changes completely changes his opinion about it. And he's like, you know, I wasn't even paying attention. This time I did, and it's great. Um, yeah. So I think I think that's also a thing. Like it came out during lockdown, so it's like some people didn't see it or saw it and just weren't interested at the time. And they've seen a lot of like good word of mouth uh, about the first one and about even about the second one now that they're like, all right, I'll give it another shot or all right, I'll, I'll visit it now that it's been like three years. Um, it was the they're... streaming that killed the first one yeah. though. Cause like you guys in the States were probably opening things up, but in Canada, like they were still asking for, you know, papers whenever you went into certain right. places. Nah, 2021, yeah, it's... they were still doing that here too. Don't worry. They were it's still doing domestic that Domestic opening too. was 41 million while it was in 2021. And uh, simultaneous release on HBO Which Max. So, yeah. So, like hundred million dollar opening, maybe. I mean, I just I mean, told you I was range. in an IMAX that was completely packed, and this was for just the pre. Yeah, but the like, so was though. fucking yeah. Mission Impossible Seven. My IMAX was packed too. That movie bombed. Like, you yeah. know, like it, it's not a good prediction. It also, it also killed uh, Rebecca Ferguson, and you're not allowed to do that. I'm glad. <laughs> it it is just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, but one of the reasons why that Mission Impossible also tanked off so hard was not long after was when Barbie and Oppenheimer came out. So any like resilience, yeah. it basically got mm. gobbled up by Barbenheimer. Yeah, Whereas but it this also didn't have like... really anything coming out. It was, it was also a crap film, which didn't help. <laughs> but like, <laughs> it, it, it didn't was all over the strong. place. Kung yeah, Fu Panda 4 stuff. is like the only thing coming out in the next couple weeks. Like, Woo! <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> that movie's going to be terrible. <laughs> is, is there also an element, so like pre-sales and pre-takers and people who book for their opening nights and, week and weekend showings, that's going to be a slightly skewed audience anyway, though, isn't it? I mean, th those are, by definition, the people who are the most passionate already about the thing they're going to go and see and are not, therefore, necessarily representative of a general audience. So you can have strong pre-sales for people who are fans of a franchise in the case of Mission Impossible or fans of a franchise in the case of Dune but the test comes from do normal people who don't go to midnight showings go and flock to see it in the weeks that follow my impression was all is with sci-fi like Dune you, you're right it's not just that people it's sci-fi struggles when sci-fi isn't good sci-fi that's absolutely true but I also think that sci-fi especially high concept sci-fi which Dune kind of is struggles generally when it, to, to get a, a general audience because it's not universally approachable it is quite deep it is quite esoteric and the things that really, when we look at the most successful science fiction brands of all time, and obviously your mind has to immediately go to Star Wars, one of the things that makes Star Wars so notable is how unscience fiction it really is. It's set in space, it's got lasers, it's got spaceships, but what is it ultimately? It's a fantasy story with a hero's journey. And it's, it's going back to common, universally understood works of drama. And actually it's playing down the scientific elements quite a lot because those tend to lose more casual moviegoers. So to the extent that Dune will suffer going forward by comparison certainly it might just be that it, it's a little bit too esoteric for all it might be good science fiction that's not necessarily everything that people are looking for maybe yeah. a better comparison as far as box office goes it would be the matrix uh because the original matrix movie was like a sleeper hit when it came out which essentially like this one was just because of circumstances um but it was well liked and it was also really dense and people had to watch it multiple times to appreciate it and then when the uh, second movie came out it opened to like four or five times the amount that the original did. Um, so like it has that potential. I feel like that's probably a more apt like box office comparison because there was like growth underneath, you know, like uh, the audience was building underneath the initial box office opening of the first movie. I'm actually surprised that the first Matrix didn't do that well because it's a phenomenal film. Like, compared well, to it was sequels, made on the cheap so and it made better. a lot of money. Like, yeah. It, like for uh, for its budget and what's hilarious is like the third movie actually made less than the first movie uh because it, it deserves um, not to yeah it, and so it, much it got worse what it than deserves. the first one. Oh, it's because yeah, the budget was so movie. bloated yeah, it was so bad i think the matrix like the first matrix is probably my favorite sci-fi film ever so and like the second yeah, I and agree. third i i dislike it completely like the second one, I think. Dude, I'm such a geek, and... dude. I fucking turned the second and third movie a couple of years ago because I was bored. Like before <laughs> I started this channel, I turned the second and third movie into one good movie. Like I made my own edit of those is that movies. Even oh, nice. <laughs> it is possible, dude. I can share the file with you. Like it's a. Really, <laughs> I would be very really interested exists. to watch that. The second one is a really set good a two and a half hour stuff. movie in there. I swear okay. to God. I yeah. believe you. It's kind of like yeah, all the fan concept. projects for the Star Wars prequels, where like if you yeah, I'm it, like, you can turn I it down to like a... two good movies instead of three mediocre to bad movies. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, I loved the Matrix movies so much when I was a kid that uh, that's that's where I geek out. 
like superheroes and uh, the Matrix. I'll leave yeah. Star Wars to you guys and shit. You know, they're I not love Star Wars, exclusive. but I, I agree with Platoon heavily on this. It's not a very science fiction esque sci fi. It's very much a space fantasy. Like it's got all the parts there, but it doesn't it doesn't explore mm -hmm. any of them the way sci fi normally does. And I think a lot of like general moviegoers, they just associate space with science fiction. Mm -hmm. And that's like the whole thing for them. But mm -hmm. it's so much deeper than that. But, yeah. And in a fun way, I mean, so in a way, Dune, certainly the, where the books are concerned, is also it pushes the really the boundaries of science fiction. It's it's set in space, but it's there, there are so many fantasy elements that go into making that. And it was a response to um, uh, to Asimov's foundation. And Asimov was complaining even at the time he was writing Foundation that science fiction was moving in this direction where there's so little science in it and there's so little speculation and all people really seem to want is uh, personal fantasy wish fulfillment stuff which is almost a targeted shot at Dune. If you, if you go through, again, just the first sort of 50 pages of the book even, and you look at how much of the stuff there is actually science fiction and how much of it is weird sort of psychic, mental, mentat voice magic. Um, it's it's very unsightly. I mean, the whole, the whole premise of the whole thing is the Butlerian revolution anyway, which basically says, no, we can't actually have robots because robots are shit. So there's not going to be technology in this. This is much more about psychotropic visions. Um, but it's still it's still quite esoteric as a as a as a uh, words as a book. <laughs> Fuck it, well, as a book. There we go. <laughs> You're hey, right. starting to sound like me. <laughs> what was I talking about? I'm halfway through my point. Give me a second here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst but, when that happens when you forget what you were saying as you're saying it. You just you're trying to piece it back together, and everyone can tell you're doing it. To every thought I've ever had. Um, yeah, I, I want to go back and read Frank Herbert because, like, I'm very familiar with a lot of Foundation, Asimov. Obviously, like, I like writing sci-fi, and if you don't read Asimov, like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. um, I've always been more like E and M Banks because I'm like huge <laughs> on space. But um, yeah, I want to see how they compare. Very pro sure. space. Very pro space. You are. Oh hell yeah! I'd wear my NASA <laughs> shirt, but it's got dog hair all over it. <laughs> I will say this: I, I like I I made the joke earlier about how I've never completed a novel. I've I I'm more of an audiobook person. I'm just I'll expand. I just I don't really like reading novels, but this oh, has, that's fine. Yeah, uh, this has actually made me want to check out this universe more. And I think that's probably the ultimate compliment a film could give to its source material mm -hmm. is that if you can get a person like me, who's probably would have never picked that up. Even if someone was like, Hey, you're into this kind of stuff. Why don't you like, no, I, I would be like, no, I don't have time for that. And like, but uh, for me to, to be interested in doing that going forward, that's, that's, a, that's saying a lot about how this, this was handled. That's very good. I mean, the, the audio, uh, the one on Audible at the moment is, it's a full cast for, certainly for the first book. I don't know about that. No, I think it's a full cast for June and June Messiah. That's just, as far as I've got with the audiobooks. It's like a cast of 50 people. So if the audiobook oh, wow. is more your thing, I'd, I'd probably recommend that. Um, they do a reasonably good job. They're not terrible, at least. But yeah, it's always a nice sign, as you say, when, when something inspires you to go and actually look at the source material or expand your knowledge of the thing. Even bad movies can do that. I mean, I've read all the Mortal Engines books and that film was shit, <laughs> but I only, I only went and read those because the film was shit, but I liked the vague idea of the thing. I, I only forgive Mortal Engines because I know a guy who worked on it. But oh. oh, yeah. Other than that, it's just like... I, I, I feel he, bad he was, for him. He, he just rotoscoped. He was like a junior VFX kid, so it's just like, yeah, he had no... He had no control over. He was, was only following up. orders, right? Yeah, that's, exactly. that's the classic excuse. Uh, Good soldiers follow orders. <laughs> I, have, I know another guy that works at Hallmark, but he's a producer, so fuck him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, we talk about that whenever we meet up for coffee or something. It's just like, so what bullshit have you been shoving down our throats lately? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Christmas romance movies came yeah. out recently. Year round. More than previous oh. years. Yeah, year round. It's always Christmas. There you Christmas go. romance make, year round. And they make back their budget <laughs> and it's every the same time. Movie. So they're going to keep it's making It's the same them. movie. It's like the fucking struggling independent mother, right? The single mother and like the the hunk out of nowhere. Like it, yeah. It's, it's yeah. Or it's like it's romance reverse. novels just like turned into movies, essentially. Mm -hmm. I like. know because there, there's actually there's a line in my Madam Web video when because she, she's watching a Christmas Carol, and so there's lines like, "Who the fuck watches a Christmas film when it's not even Christmas?" But no, the Hallmark Channel exists. People mm -hmm. do actually do that. I should really remove that line from the script. My Man, mom. Does that. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what the line is, but she's like criticizing Scrooge, and then like not only does the shot of Scrooge like prove her wrong. 
but like your movie is complete shit in comparison. Like what is happening here? <laughs> uh-huh. I don't remember what the line is though. I should have t- taken. I was gonna say there's Christmas shops and Christmas villages that you can go to year round as well. Like they're not just open during Christmas because there are people that their lives just revolve yeah. around Christmas. They're kind of like those weird Disney World people where their lives revolve around Disney. There's people whose lives revolve around Christmas, which is quite interesting. Corny white people. That mainly, yes. <laughs> I mean, I kept my Christmas lights up all year round the one year, but I was out of laziness <laughs> more than anything. <laughs> yeah. Anything else to be said then um, for June part two? I mean, assuming we are all going to see That's it. That's is, is everyone going to see it uh, basically as soon as it's out, or is anyone waiting for... I... I'm seeing it on Monday because the IMAX that's playing it in 70 millimeter was basically booked solid until then. I so. I, I will say you if you have the option to watch it in IMAX, do it. Yeah, I have. Even to, if, even if you have even if you have to wait a couple of days, like it it really was amazing to see the sound. Sa- the sound. Um, there are some times where the uh, the uh, the dialogues have been hard to hear because of the sound mixing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it wasn't that bad. Like it didn't happen too often, so I, it's a, it's forgivable. Does he go Nolan with the sound mixing? <laughs> there are some all? parts that there are some parts where like you the your chair shakes if you're an IMAX. So oh, all right. Yeah, I watched Oppenheimer in my shitty local theater, and like whenever it did that loud like effects, it was like, oh, I thought my ears were bleeding at one point. Like that sounded like a gunshot. Holy cow. But uh, yeah, I definitely for the most part the audio is, is well mixed though. Yeah. All right. The worst it, audio uh, mixing in this country is because like, I tend to just to go to view cinemas, and every time before any film, everything goes black, and then this voice comes out, and it's so loud. He goes, "Oi!" But like deafening, <laughs> "Oi!" <laughs> just, "Oi, he, mate!" He just he, that's basically it. He puts on this really faux, like affectionate, slightly chavy kind of accent, and tells you to keep your phones off because we're all here for the moment, aren't we? Yeah, oh, turn God. your phones off. But it's like, fucking hell, I'm already deaf. You've ruined this for me. I'm not going to be able to hear the film at this point. Please turn the goddamn thing down. <laughs> what? Turn your phone off. It just deafens everyone. Wait, so what is the, the what What are you guys predicting that is the box office for this one? I said um, high, high of 80, 8, 850, low of 700. So I guess I would, I'd have, I'll split the difference and say like 775. Are we saying domestic or worldwide? Worldwide, worldwide. we'll say. Oh, a or million? both if you're ballsy. <laughs> I'm gonna have to write these down so I, I can shame people. Didn't we already do this? No, we did oh, it for Madam Web. Web. Oh, wait, no, I thought we did it two weeks ago. Did we? Did we? Or, uh, mm-hmm. We did it. Oh, hold up. I guess I'll check. Chat. I feel like... Can now, confirm. We did, it... we did it. No, we did. We guessed Madam Web and we guessed another movie, and I'm pretty sure it was Dune. Deadpool. It was Deadpool. Oh, Deadpool. Yeah. Okay. Never I'll mind. start with D, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can see Deadpool, Dune, you know, really similar things. Like, I can completely the same see franchise. how you Both sci-fi. I, re- <laughs> I originally thought that's what I was booking to go see. I was very, they were very confused when I showed up in my Wolverine outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I think it should clear 600, though, Dune Part 2. If it is as good as you say, it should clear 600. Worldwide. I'm going to say. Eight to nine hundred, probably a billion, just because there is so much hype around this this one. People are clearly thirsty to go see a good film. Like Oppenheimer is a good example. Not everyone will shell out the money to go see a biopic. But- your margin for your margin for error is bigger than the total box office haul of Madam Web. Like two hundred, you, you've given yourself a two hundred million dollar margin for error. You're gonna have to be more Give specific. Give yourself a Madam Web like, margin. It could be eight hundred okay, okay. or nine hundred okay, or a billion. Okay. You know who knows? All right, all right, right. Nine hundred, nine hundred. Nine hundred. I'll go a billion. Do sci fi's typically do well in Asia? I have no idea. Uh, so sci fi is things. fucking huge everywhere besides like. I mean, it's big in America because it's the second biggest movie going market in the world now behind China or it's like neck and neck. But like, uh, for example, Dune Part One, its international box office was 75 percent of its total. So that's, an, that's, that's shit. fucking that's enormous. Good. Yeah. Yeah. As I say, there's no black people on the cover, too, which is a selling feature in the Asian market. <laughs> ah, 
Good job, so, marketing team. Zendaya. Like then. Oh, oh but right, they'll probably Zendaya. lighten her up in the in the photos, you know, or just put Timothy yeah. Chalamet yeah. front and center for everything, and they'll be okay. <laughs> they'll put a mask over her like they did with Black Panther. <laughs> yeah, oh, there God. you go. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll say two hundred and seven fifty. Oh, you actually doing both? Okay, two hundred domestic, seven fifty. Yeah. yeah, total. I was also going to go seven fifty, but I'm going to low cut everybody and say seven hundred. Why not? So um, you're doing the opposite God. of prices, right? You're going below us. I always <laughs> no, go. he I is. He's going one dollar. I <laughs> I've got just, the last three predictions we've done. I've always waited till everyone else has done it, and then I've gone for the lowest one out of everyone. And I've also noticed that they're basically the same because I printed seven fifty for Deadpool. 75 for madam web and now 700 <laughs> for, for this i think um, you are wrong about madam web so far because i think it already at least what's that right now it is, um, it is at is 77 it? baby Woo! 77 Ooh. i'm still is the he's... closest then the next person was you on 95 yeah i say 95 mm. <laughs> they'll keep, they'll keep it, they'll keep it in theaters the film reels. they'll yeah. probably want to see that 100 million they'll fudge the numbers you know like oh yeah it'll be 100 million and a dollar and is it doing well overseas? Oh. Um, no, it's like 50. So it's international's 54%. So, okay. you know. The, uh, the budget, budget for Madam Web was 80 million. That was the reported budget, but Sony yeah. is like notorious for not using all of their reported budget and some of it disappearing. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the only person, Doc, I didn't catch your prediction for this one. What was it? I, I split my. I, I originally said I, I predicted between 750 and 850, and I said like 775, 800. I'm going to go so for we'll 800 just, just to yeah, make we'll it easy. Because yeah. there's two zeros in that, and there's three separate numbers in the other one. Mm -hmm. So typing efficiency. There we are. Okay, we'll come back in a couple of weeks, and we'll see how it does. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that means we're moving on. Does anyone have a preference as to what we do next? It's between the Avatar, the Last Bender thing, or X-Men 97. <laughs> well, I have zero Bender. opinion about the Last Bender thing, so I'd rather go with the X-Men trailer, personally. X -Men kind, of my, trailer. kind of my thing, so... Okay, um, that's what uh, I've actually got. It. Can we play trailers on this stream? Is that a thing you can do? You can do them if you chop, like if you do it slowly, usually you don't get uh, five second intervals. I was yeah, gonna say, five... if you have an overlay as well, usually you can get away with it. <laughs> Shit, oh, yeah, see, this is we need to actually do this an thing overlay. where we actually get a, an actual design for this stream so yeah, we don't just use nice. stream yards. Andrew, I'll pay you to do it. You do good stuff. All right, thank you. Um, hey, same, next time. Andrew. We're starting a show on Thursday. You want to? You're starting <laughs> another <laughs> show. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I need oh, wait, one. am I three Thursday? No, I'm not free Thursday. Because wait, or what time is it? Uh, I would talk it after. You will talk after. Sorry. Yeah. X Men ninety seven. Did you get that pulled up? I am. I am pulling it up. Oh, well, we I can be like out. Joe no, Rogan. There you got pull up. Pull that up, Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Pull that up. Hey, Platoon. Hey, pull hey, pull Jamie. that up, dude. Why? Why we got to be like Joe Rogan? Actually, That's if good. he puts it on his little platoon TV, then he could just play it uninterrupted. Oh my god! Is that everything we can? Oh. I, mean, I can. I can actually do yeah, that. Oh do that. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay. Oh, the, the, the audio oh, put, might be the problem too, though, because sometimes yeah. Put no. Put your non-copyright or your copyright uh, proof uh, Ewok on the TV. Uh, see, now you're asking me to do complicated stuff. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, just put it on the TV. Honestly, I think that that image will be small enough where it won't. It won't. Yeah. Matter. Oh god! Even that's actually Wait, still complicated. We... Fucking hell. Just bump the opacity <laughs> down like fifty percent, and you'll you should be good. But oh, but okay, it's gonna take me just talking amongst yourselves because I'm actually gonna right. have to. I have to go into Streamlabs. I have to window capture, add source, add source. Just find something else to talk about. This is gonna take me. If you look closely, few. you can you can see Vex in the uh, in the Ooh. trailer. By the way, what? <laughs> just I'll point her out. Don't worry. I seem to have, I've entirely become YouTube. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have become YouTube. There we go. There, there must be a quicker and better uh, way You're ruining this, but... the illusion because you're showing us how it's done. Yeah. I know, but <laughs> little, taking myself off camera, little shouldn't little dude I? Has, has become his worst nightmare. He has become YouTube. I have become YouTube. And then just to make I it diegetic. <laughs> I, I have come. Okay. Like, yeah, hey, look at that on the tiny little TV. It's it's there. So now in theory, I just hit. Oh fuck, where's it gone? It's over there. It's Sorry, awesome. Windows. <laughs> I hit the play button, and look, it's in. And we have the sound. Oh wait, did it mute?
platoon? It, 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 it did him and I don't hear it. shit. We can't oh. hear it. Yeah, now there's no sound. Wait, you can or you can't hear that? Not you can't hear, hear it. Are you? We're all professionals, well, we, we swear. Wait, hold on. Wait. When you played it, it sounded like your voice got lower or muted itself. Oh. Or is that just me? Maybe. No, it did, yeah. Okay. Because your mouth started moving, but nothing was coming out. Or it could just be your uh, avatar glitching or something. I mean, can you make it out just from the subtitles? It's Not fine. in that size, no. <laughs> the music is kind of cool. Come on, Platoon. Well, you can hear the music. No. No, oh. I was just saying, I watched it earlier. The music's cool. That's oh, that's, that's my only fucking compliment. useless to me. What? Well, actually, okay. I will tell you this. What do you want me to do, I, man? I, I, I just work here. It, I wouldn't actually use, I would go without that because that music actually got my first ever video um, like flagged because it's, oh. uh, so I wouldn't even let that music go. Yay. Oh, okay. Yay for my, my mistakes of the Kick past. Back to the, the <laughs> He's just a boomer. Let him be. I don't ever do this shit. All right. This is, this is new to me. So like, I, I've got it up. It's on my screen. Shall I, do you just want to watch it just silently it. Well, this, and this quit, quit all your complaining or do you want sure. me to? Yeah. Yeah, we'll watch it silent. Just blow them up. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now I have to find. There it is. Can we still hear? Yeah, make the music with your voice, and that'll be good. So, if you seven during the Chicago Bulls reign. The animation. Pause it. Go back to the uh, to the riot there, real quick. Is it yeah, riot? The, yeah, it, or like that. Like, the, the riot. Well, There's or like that holding the signs. It was no. It was only like two, two, three seconds back. A little bit further. I feel like I'm further. an MMM. No, now. you're going the wrong direction. You're going the opposite direction. Only go back two seconds. You said go back. That is me going back. Yes, but you went back like twenty seconds. No, we definitely did not. I don't think we did. Wait, play no, it? The other way, the other way, the other way. Jeez. You're right, or you're right. British yeah. left. Okay, there, was, there was a scene where everybody was holding signs. How did nobody so else forward? No, that's too Forget far. It. It's too far. <laughs> Start it all over again. You know what? We are in shambles. Go yeah, go. Yeah, go from that funeral scene. Go no, from there. too far. <laughs> You'll see you were holding signs. Casket lowering. <laughs> Marco? I wasn't actually watching this trailer, by the way. I was oh fucking around God, with Streamlabs. You can see it on the preview. <laughs> you can't there? This gold. Just go. What? Hit play. I'll say stop. If I hit play no, from what? there, will we catch it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fuck it. Um, it's like right after this. Stop. Yep. yep. <laughs> oh my God. We're right back to where we started again. <laughs> <laughs> there's a delay riding. all right you say stop and evidently there's a delay right. because i stopped when you said stop that's the gonna be my excuse you look closely like, vex is, is in the crowd lowered. okay the desert the, the the base the, uh, the the designated brown chick is in the crowd of the uh of the rioters <laughs> oh. oh well if vex I, is in the crowd we're gonna have to go okay i thought there was something more useful in Wait, there like they me? were talking about right like trans rights or something oh what there you go What's there's that you. it's just a brown girl it's, Are you telling like me we just went through all of that shit so I could get to that screen so you could say, oh, it's just a brown well, no, there, There's actually a point to what I, why, I, why I had you stop here, though, is that they definitely just threw that person in there so that uh, to appease people because it's clearly so all, it, all it's all white people except for that one person. Can, yeah, okay, racism can I be should honest? be diverse. That was, be really the, that was really the point of why I had you do this. The, 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 the Vex joke was just to add It to doesn't it. even look like a person. It looks like a sprinkled donut uh, from here. <laughs> What? Am I blind? It's like... April O'Neil from no, Ninja there, Turtles. She is very no, but like you could just tell that they that that was like added after the fact, just because they were like, oh well, we don't want it to just be seven or eight white people that are angry. We that that but that we can't. there's <laughs> clearly a Hispanic man or woman in a purple shirt next to the guy that's holding an evolution is a something mm -hmm. sign. No, that's uh, a white guy. He just that's can. a white dude. That's, so, that's, that's just so another name guy. for another white guy. <laughs> That look. Come that guy's now. name is probably Brock or something. That guy's so white. <laughs> look at his hair. Yeah, he has an right, office job for sure with that hair. Mm -hmm. Okay, what He's about like the, the, the stop mutants guy? Right, he looks pretty Hispanic. You know, he looks like Tony Stark. <laughs> <laughs> Fat Tony Stark. <laughs> uh, yeah, and okay, then we have a Karen, a Karen on the left, 
and a Karen on the right as well. There's two Karens. Well, that's it's great. true. It's like, Seriously, am I am I not? Because I don't even see a face on whatever that brown. It looks there's like a small. There is a face. Yeah, it's just she very, so it's very small. poorly rendered. Okay. I'm just, but that was one thing I noticed when I re when I rewatched it. I because that was one of the things everybody was talking about was that this is very much just a bunch of white angry white people and i was like oh no there's one brown chick here look at this it's Woo! like okay it really just like if i squint and look at it so there's a donut and there's some sprinkles and then inside the donut there's like a black baby with mike tyson's face <laughs> and like a do bag oh is God. what i'm kind of seeing from from this uh, so i'll have to i'll have to go and watch it myself later but that doesn't look like even a person <laughs> if I squint, this looks like a bunch of like Christians uh, protesting against Harry Potter. I don't know why. No, I like well, the guy who's wearing a fucking button-up shirt, but also gloves. Gloves yeah, he's and gonna, sunglasses. He, he's going he's, to murder someone today. He's a, he's a very he's he's a very respectable skinhead. Mm -hmm. oh, he doesn't get his hands. He, he, he looks oh, he's a, a lot like a fad. He's a fad. He's definitely a fad. Mm -hmm. You can tell. That's why he's got he, gloves he's on. A, it's, it's all actually a, it's a psyop. This is what this is. <laughs> this is this might be my all time favorite beast up moment right now that I've ever been a part of. <laughs> this guy gave LSD to Kaczynski. Oh, this is the <laughs> FBI training video for for infiltrating protests. There you go. Yeah. Also, like the these presumably sort of handwritten <laughs> signs, and that that is definitely in an actual font. That's Comic Sans. That's it's Comic, comic Sans. Sans. They, they actually write in Comic Sans. That's clever. <laughs> That's so I like that he also wrote enough to one side that there was still enough room for the stop mutant sign to not mm -hmm. overshadow the back to where you came oh. from sign. Yeah. I like that there's uh, mutants with the with it crossed out and someone was nice enough. I'm like, here, I made you one too. And <laughs> oh, yeah, there's, there's, they copy and paste in the so this is, mutants um... with me. So this is actually an AI. This is Gemini made this. It was like give give us uh, protesters. And no, Gemini we'll... couldn't have done this. There were white people in this. You can't. That's, that's not. Well, no. Yeah, that, that, that's the a new Gemini. It's up. the only way you can get white people. Say so, no, no. Give us, give, us that. You give us intolerant it. protesters, and we're gonna. And this is what you get. Don't hate yourself you just because you're racist. <laughs> <laughs> There are but, other uh, reasons. White there's people. no um. There's no trans flag though, so we know that we are actually. On to a good thing. I don't think there is anyway. Can't see one. Dude, I that's, bet trans people Canadian are in flag. that crowd. There's a Canadian Probably. flag that's close enough. I see yeah. a Ukraine flag. I see... <laughs> that's the sprinkled that donut. Oh. <laughs> Wait, there is it Freddie Mercury behind that Indian woman? <laughs> what? <laughs> Looks like Freddie Mercury in behind. I don't oh, know, I see it. <laughs> I, I see it. Where? I'm lost. Uh, the, the red, it's like, the red it's like almost like Indian it's woman. almost like somebody like photobombed underneath the elbow of uh of oh yeah. the Tony Stark look alike. Platoon, zoom in on this. That's where I'm looking. <laughs> that's the I thought that's the brown person. Is that not the brown Underrated person? Comment. The what brown person's no. right in front there in the pink. Oh my god, pink. no, I was looking at whatever was under Tony Stark's arm. That's what I was describing. What the oh. white guy? <laughs> Tony Stonk. <laughs> Look Tony at that, just like Stark. that brown Tony piece Stank. of shit on the screen <laughs> under Tony Stark's elbow. <laughs> Who just fell off their chair? We can't see. <laughs> Wait, okay, so the, the, the thing in the part, the indigo shirt um, next to this guy in the middle holding the evolution is a blank. That's the brown person? No, no, it's the one, it's the one where my mouse is. You can't see it, fuck. Um, <laughs> we saw it earlier. Wait, you pulled it up earlier. You, your mouse was up there earlier. You're but it's it not again. there we, now. Click on the window that the. Uh, is that how this works? Oh, it is. Shit. Yeah, you're yeah. right. right there. Oh, where the cursor is? That's this that's... one. Where the mouse is? Yeah, that's what I was describing earlier. That's the oh. brown person. Yeah. 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 Are you? Do you not what? see the fact that it it's a brown person? She doesn't it see doesn't race. Okay. Person. It looks like <laughs> a really high. I'm sorry. She's like. She's like. That just. That just looks like a person. That's what I look like. That so that's what all people should. No, look like that looks there. like the Mike Tyson baby that I described earlier. For... I have no idea what the hell you're saying. A Mike Tyson baby <laughs> has a full head of hair that's dyed red. All this section has done is just confirmed to me that we actually need a proper layout. Um, are we progressing with the trailer? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I think I, can... I'm, I am so happy that I I rewound us to this. Yeah, I can actually engage anti copyright arm as well. Look. It, it, it will never, it will never see what's happening. Anti copyright. Fuck it. Anti copyright arm has also skipped the video. Shit. No. Make, make, no, the, make the arm bigger. 
and just take up the <laughs> yeah. as as you said that a scent and alarm popped up. <laughs> oh man, this just looks it just looks so ugly compared to the old cartoon. Really? It looks like they're trying I also to hate modernize his it. voice. Wolverine's voice sucks in this. Is Wolverine short in this one? Yes. I want him short. Good. He's always been short in the uh He's, I'm tired of taller than Wolverine. Jubilee, but significantly shorter than Cyclops and and Gambit. I want just a small, stubby rat man. As I mean, that's Wolverine. what Wolverine's supposed to be. <laughs> that yeah. that power makes absolutely no sense, right there. What just happened? Don't he think would... about it. It's cool though. His his claws are pink now. They're cool. Where's yeah, the dude, road but... butt shot? Do you know where that is, Dark Hour? Exactly. Uh no, I have not done that much research. <sighs> I have, I, I have. You uh, failed road. us. No, I have, I have my robe. This is uh, the thing that stuck out to me. Is this meant to be Magneto? Yes. Yes. When did he grow those luscious locks of hair? Yeah, he I was has, say, Dale. In the comics, he has had long He's hair. He's so handsome. Times. Right. Uh, a lot of times you can't tell, though, because he has his helmet on. Oh. But you can right. still see because his helmet doesn't, like, his hair would be coming out the bottom of his helmet. That's mm -hmm. true. No, he think. ties it up in a neat ponytail in the back. Yeah, dude. Oh. Or he puts on a like a a bald cap. That's a silver fox right there. <laughs> Sounds Dang. like a lot of work. That guy looks like the guy that turns into a bear in uh what's that in the game? <laughs> that the guy that's that's Oh, Boulder's Gate? Bear. Yeah, Boulder's Gate. This guy looks like the guy that fucks a bear. It does kind Actually, of the, the guy, <laughs> the, that guy did try to fuck me the first time I played that game. The first time I ever spoke <laughs> hey. to him. In fact, I went to the camp for the first time and I thought I'm gonna have to just I'm gonna have a chat with these these party people because I've not done that yet. First conversation with him, he's like, let's go and hold hands by the moonlight and kiss. I'm like, whoa, oh, hold on a minute. I've just <laughs> recruited you, wizard. I feel like we, we were, uh, we were like, like, we the we dinner just, uh, a, a Magneto helmet scene here, though. So, yeah, we I'm, don't I'm, get that, do we? From, from what I get from this, that. The, the premise is just that he's in charge of everything that dead Professor X had, right? That's what I get. Yeah, Wait, Mr. X Men is now. dead? Yeah, didn't he oh, die he at the end space. of the last season of the show? Didn't he go to space or something? What? Okay, went to space? What the, what's the, uh, the <laughs> I don't story? know, man. I was like what a fucking it? child when I watched this. I've made up for it. Oh, what's hey, he's wearing the helmet show, now. By the way, We're back. Um, nice. I didn't catch any story whatsoever in that trailer. Like, what's the premise? Uh, the premise is the fucking X-Men are back, okay? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So, Professor yeah. X is dead, and, and Magneto is in charge, I think. Is okay, the premise? Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, because Rogue only shows up for it feels like a fraction of a couple seconds, and I feel like the butt thing might have been taken out of proportion. No, mm. no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I we should see if we can disprove that. Uh, just because like I'm the so the shot that everyone has on social media right now, right? So there's big juicy booty from the ninety, right? Right, booty right? beauty. Yeah. And then there's like, you know, when, you know, there's just characters standing in the background of a cartoon and the artist just half ass it. They just put the general shape of said character and fill in the colors. That's what it looks like. They screenshotted for the rogue one because there's no detail on her whatsoever. Hmm. Hmm. And, 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 I, I did think that they, they did make an, an ass out of a molehill with that one. They say it's so overblown in, in how unimportant that, that is. But yeah. Yeah. Would it be better if she had an ass? Yes, probably. Does it matter as much as it's been made out? Also, no, probably. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've never even seen the original cartoon run, so I don't really know what to be excited for, if there is anything to be excited for about this. Was the original run for this well-received? Is this something yes. that people are genuinely looking forward to? Yeah, yes, this is actually well a lot of people's like go-to kind of nostalgia memory of X-Men, uh, more so than the comics or the movies or anything. Like This is, I feel like... Not everyone by any you know stretch of the imagination, but the majority of people like this is the one they think about. Like it yeah. had the music and the costumes that you, um, I don't know that you just instantly think of when you think the of gym, yeah, like it the became Lee iconic. Mm. Yeah. I think other than like the early two thousands films, this is like the only really association I have with X Men. I like I, I never really got into comics, but more of an early so 2000s if, if not for batman the animated series the x-men cartoon probably would have went down as the all-time greatest uh yeah comic book cartoon it was just it, it unfortunately came out at the same time as the greatest one 
It was like the perpetual second place, unfortunately. Yeah. And I saw somebody in the co comments in the uh, the chat. No, it was not a custom made helmet. I'm not. Why would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that, Nick. Uh, the defeminization of the female character is a red flag for the story. Like, is that is that proven in the trailer? Because we didn't get the sound. That's why I'm. Is I'm that? Not, I mean. Oh, no, I'm not going. I'm not going back through trying to find that arse shot. The, the <laughs> amount of fucking trouble we had trying to find some people holding signs, and the arse, the arse isn't even there. So, no. Right. I I've will just, find I'm the arse. Okay. You go looking for the arse and screenshot it, and I'll put it on the okay. screen. All right, all right. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. I from what for what it's worth, from what I remember seeing of the trailer, I don't. There's no particularly egregious quality to it that I could remember seeing. There's no red flags in it particularly that I remember seeing. It could be that I'm not looking for the right things. It just seemed like a fairly average trailer for an old-looking cartoon. Yeah, I, I, I don't no, there's... hate the modernized animation. Like, they're sort of trying to emulate the original style. But, I mean, that's that can be a bit subjective. They we use a lot of, um, <clears throat> of uh, like, an, uh, instead of, like, hand-drawing it like they used to now, it's all put through a computer for quite a few of the movie it's, shots. It's digital art. Right? It's digital art. That's yeah. what me and Cynic were talking about, like, right before, like when I first came into the backstage, I was like, it, this just looks, it looks so generic now. The older cartoons all had kind of a distinct style, like the X-Men cartoon and the Spider-Man cartoon had their own style. The Batman cartoon had, so now they all just kind of, almost everything that comes out just has this generic look to it where they all have this almost pseudo cell shadedness over. It. It's really annoying. It's uh, it, it irritates the crap out of me that they have all gone this route. Anime has um, been doing that in recent years too, unfortunately. I mean, the the quality is still above American animation, but you can see that it's all it's all going digital and it's lost some of the charm. Yeah. Oh um, my god, this was taken out. Okay, hold on, I'm getting the screenshot. <laughs> I'm getting the screenshot. But uh, the Batman animated series was that not done digitally? I, I can't imagine that was cell animation in the '90s. Well, they they no, they, they there was a lot of hand drawn stuff we actually i actually had kevin altieri on my channel and he explained it and a lot of it was drawn on black backgrounds okay so so not exactly cell animation more like a it was like a, a it was like a, it was like a combination of the two okay that's interesting yeah because that, that that series is amazing i don't know anyone that was a kid in the 90s that didn't watch that on saturday mm. uh we're just waiting on vex's picture of rogue's ass <laughs> Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. I was just screenshotting it and labeling it. We'll DM it <laughs> one moment. They did take a lot of ass from her. There's, there used to be way more ass. Yeah, oh, this was blown way out of way out of proportion. The anyway, how's everybody doing while we wait? <laughs> everyone feeling good? Yeah, real uh, good. Yeah. What Has would um? Oh, okay. I love. I love this shirt, by the way. I'm either special or the special guest. <laughs> you got That's everyone awesome. anticipating it now. I'm anticipating the ass now. It's like dial up <laughs> internet ass finding. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah when I'm you reveal it, can you slowly <laughs> just bring it down one, yeah, one like, like... pixels at a time? <laughs> <laughs> and then stop. Also, right the hubbub you... of uh, a character being non-binary as well i i, I dm it to you platoon there you go oh you dm'd it to the person who's absolutely incompetent okay uh, <laughs> i mean you are the showrunner right now so yeah. oh for fuck's sake okay right wait what i am imagine I you're still oh my god yeah no. <laughs> um yeah <laughs> there is that um <laughs> you, you you think that anyway uh, uh share screen there we are blah, 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 blah. i'm getting quicker i'm getting quicker there we are so We'll, that is what we're looking at. Yeah, that's the so that's the whole shot from the trailer, and people are zooming into that and saying that, oh, they took Rogue's ass away. <laughs> really? That's yeah. a bit of a stretch. That's why, because when I saw that circulating, I said. was like, this looks like she's in the distance. It doesn't look like she's up close. And yeah, but people yes. were in intentionally cropping it to. To make it seem like they've uh, desexified Rogue, right? And yeah, because it's, it's is... common practice, isn't it? When so, when if it's a distant shot, you're not putting anywhere near as much detail into anything in the exactly. distance. I mean, look at the giant fucking gormless generic man up in the top right. Yeah, you're eyes drawn big. to that in the shot, so you definitely and... have like B level effort on everything else in the frame. 
so in the uh because in that opening of that trailer it was like on a tv and it was flashing back to the old series right is that what that was can I anyone confirm so Did someone who's watched sure. it confirm at all <laughs> wait what was the question i'm sorry i just somebody was uh me- somebody had messaged me um which i'll get it to platoon afterwards some fun facts and details about mortal engines and the movie but um, okay was what well, was playing on at the beginning of this 97 trailer was that like flashbacks yes the- it was all okay. it was it was old clips from the original show specifically the last episode so even in that um there's a zoom out shot of rogue as well where she's just a stick figure no curves whatsoever oh no so- it was it was it uh, I agree with you. I was just joking, but a lot of times when someone's not the focal point, I mean, how many cartoons have we seen where people are the wrong, like, what was it? Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was like notorious for this, where oh, I wasn't there'd be multiple Raphaels and stuff in the background. and Yeah. But you would never yeah, notice because your eyes drawn somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't pointing shots. out at something you said. I'm just saying this is the thing that was circulating on social media to try and get you to be like, oh, Disney has wokeified X-Men now. Don't fall for the bait. And it's clearly that they have manipulated this for mm-hmm. clicks. So. Oh, I mean, yeah. It's, it's There's like a really loud group of people on the Internet who have always been obsessed with that one particular clip of uh, Rogue laying down on the ground in front of Apocalypse. Mm. So that's that that was bound to happen with something like this. That was the point of comparison they were using as well, wasn't yeah. it? I think that's the only yeah. clip I remember seeing, which was yeah. always put side to side, as though these are actually contextually the same shot. So the same yeah. amount of detail and attention has been put to it. That that is insane. But I think you're yeah. probably right that there is a slightly broader movement of, of people who are very much looking to make an issue out of this kind of thing. You can kind of see from from some perspectives why they are looking to make an issue out of it. It's kind of like the pronouns in Starfield thing. It's the wrong example to pick. Um, but nevertheless, it's part of the broader campaign against a problem that does, does actually exist. A similar thing was, uh, they, didn't they do the unified Lara Croft design? And people have yes. apparently decided that that is masculine. And it's like, it's really not. Like, your standards for femininity have just been upped by about 900% in order to find something to complain about with this one. I don't really see why this is the, the example you're picking. Same thing with Rogue's ass. But hey, at least it means that we got lots of opportunities to see asses on Twitter. So that was nice. Cartoon asses, though. So is it? Was uh, it really Platoon is a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's my it's... kind of thing. <laughs> gotta please the, the the cartoon people among us as well. Yeah, him, Lofty. They're all gonna have a heyday with the show. <laughs> yeah, uh, calm speaking down, of, son, like... it's just a drawing <laughs> <laughs> of the um of the show itself. Then again, I know absolutely nothing about it. I never never even saw the original, but. For, for this to be good, for this to be something that, that people would actually look forward to, to watching, what would it have to do? Is, is there a natural story arc that it could go on? Is it going to be drawing from comics? Who, does anybody know anything at all about it? Um, so uh, the way that the original cartoon went is that they would basically take storylines and kind of condense them into smaller bits. Uh, most notably, the one that a lot of people point to is the Dark Phoenix saga, which uh, is pretty much the most famous X-Men story of all time. And they, it was one of the, the best. It was actually, well, I mean, it's really not that hard to do. The both movies sucked, but it was the best adaptation of that of all time. It was, there was actually a lot of um, scenes that were recreated almost exactly perfectly to the comic panels, which was really cool. Interesting. Hmm. I, I barely remember watching the series. Like, like I said, I was a little kid when I watch these on Saturday mornings and whether or not I actually paid full attention. Um, I do seem to remember the, like the slave planet and whatnot. And the bad guys are like called the Sentinels. Is that right? Yes. The Sentinels. Right. But beyond that, I honestly have no idea. I honestly thought Xavier was alive at the end. So (laughs) what the hell do I know? Uh, But yeah, that's uh, actually, of course, because I'm me, I have it right here. (laughs) I think it's a bit of a stretch to call it woke, though. I sort of half expected that, you know, let's either gender swap or transify some of the characters or (laughs) take all the femininity out. I didn't necessarily see that, but... One thing they might end up doing, so there was a continuation of the cartoon in comic form that they could effectively pull from. I, I haven't heard anything about that specifically, uh, but that was there. There was a. They did continue the storyline. Okay, I have no idea about the comic, so 
I did notice, uh, and it's funny because a lot of people are making a big deal out of like the morph non-binary thing. I'm like, it, he can change what he is at all times. So like, that's almost the definition of that. I'm not actually really all that upset about that. I'm like, if yeah. he could be whichever one he wants at any time. Like with all the blatant examples we have of this these days, like, can you just give them this one? <laughs> it's not that. I, I'll, I'll like. give them the ass one. The non-binary one, I can understand why people are pissed off about because it's it's so obviously. I, I, well, in its defense, I don't think that that was part of official publicity material. I have a feeling that that was written up as publicity material by a third party. So it's like a press report as opposed to they are coming out and telling us that Morph or whatever his name is, is in fact non-binary. Either, either way, I can understand why people are pissed off about that. The, the term non-binary actually did not exist in 1997. It just wasn't there. No, it It's didn't. very much post-2010. Um, and even before then, if you go back, I think that the precursor was gender fluid and that was only going through some very, very tiny circulation magazines, which were only read by a niche of political activists. Um, and so the idea that you're going back and effectively retconning in modern day woke terminology into a 90s show, which is effectively what this is, uh, is justifiably annoying. Um, yeah, I can but, see why it's annoying. I just don't. I, 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 maybe I'm becoming numb to it at this point. I mean, oh, yeah, there are bigger they rumors. They it in the show, yeah. right? Yes. Because, um, like, they could put it in plubis, plubis, yeah, pl publicity. Ha yeah, that thing. If they could put it in that. Um, but it doesn't matter because it depends on whether or not it's like if he just shows up and he's like, I am non-binary. Yeah, uh, I think that's, that's the expectation like, as well. Expectations yeah. are that this is going to be just the most on the nose campaigning, lecturing, hectoring essay on modern social justice, because that's what so much media gives us. Um, mm -hmm. And so you can understand why people are quite keen to point out even small problems because they've well, there's a track record, isn't there? The last time anyone who comes out innocently saying, oh, this character from the 90s is non-binary, and it turns out the show they're in is actually just a huge dossier of, of propagandistic materials. It happens fairly frequently. You can see why people are annoyed about that. Um, mm -hmm. But the I proof also, is in the show. I also think I don't really care because I, I don't expect anything of, anything they make to be good at this point. So I'm not expect I'm expecting nothing out of this. So that's probably why I'm not really like I'm like whatever, make them whatever you want. Or sorry, it, the fact that I keep saying him, I'm 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 a bigot clearly. But uh, <laughs> um, it's like whatever you want to do at this point, I don't care. It's just, I'm not gonna. I'm probably gonna watch the first episode just to see how bad it it can really possibly be, and if it if it is as bad as I expect it to be. I mean, I, I guess I am part of the problem. I mean, I can only fight against uh, a company that refuses to listen to its customer it. base for so long. <laughs> you know, like, how much more can I fight against it? Well, like, modern Marvel animation, like, what's their track record like? I can't say I've actually watched anything that they've put out. Is there anything, like, that can give us a bit more insight on, like, the attitude that they have? <laughs> what if? Which, stuff, or... Yeah, I was going to say, what if is the only one that's sort of coming to mind, and I've not seen any and... of that. Okay. Good God, season two! Don't watch what if it. was animated? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I yeah, I didn't. I just saw like the the one still of it, and I just I didn't. I don't care. They weren't they weren't bringing back TV. all the actors for those minis. Like they would they would have had to bring back some like uh, Tony. I think Tony Stark's in a few of them. They weren't bringing back uh, Robert Downey Jr. Okay. for that shit. They did bring some some of the people <laughs> of voice act, oh, which I, which I think was kind of a problem for some of them. Um, but yeah, they got someone to replace. Tony Stark because he's way too expensive <laughs> for an animated show, um, and also the show is terrible. Um, yeah. Like it's That's probably the it is reason. <laughs> it is the most action figurey thing ever because like uh, uh, what's her name Captain Carter like obtains every weapon like every like clickbaity weapon in in marv in the mcu like she ob obtains mjolnir hella's uh like head uh crown uh i think she gets like a couple others i think she gets stormbreaker uh she she holds the infinity stones just with her hands um which is a huge problem but the show doesn't actually like do anything about it all they do is like th do it through a throwaway line and have uh dr strange give like enchant her with a spell and it's like ah you will be uh immune to any of the uh power of the, the stones and it's like wow hey dr strange you could use that that was it's a pretty handy spell but whatever um 
And then they have CGI laser fight. Um, what That's are the terrible. odds? What's the yeah. point of having any other weapon if you have the infinity stones? Like, <laughs> and, that's, the dude, problem, that's the problem with a weapon like that. Like, you literally have the power to control yeah. the universe, essentially, in all bloody timelines the thing, the or thing whatever. about that show is people think it's, like, bulletproof to criticism because it's like, oh, but it's a what-if scenario. But it, what if doesn't matter? Like, in one of the scenes with um the Guardians... um. Uh, with Star Lord, they completely character assassinate Star Lord, um, and they're like, "Oh, but it's a what if scenario." But it's no, the characters are supposed to be consistent. Like the story in the MCU has been consistent in this universe up until this point. You're just character assassinating him for no reason, just to fit your own story. Um, yeah, it's terrible. It's it's a terrible what if type of uh, what if. That's another way of saying it's fan fiction. It is, it, is very, story. it is very much... It's probably some of the worst fan fiction I've ever uh, read. Like, it's really, I don't know, really bad. Sonic High School exists. So. Oh that is my true. God. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like they hired that guy. Sundance <laughs> rejects anyone. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. But yeah. So are you guys going to be watching it? or No. I'll probably... Like I said, I'll probably watch the first episode. Maybe first two, just so I can like see what's going on if i want to review it if i don't care enough i i've i've gotten to the point where i'm pretty much numb to anything that disney does with characters i loved i uh, it's i it i they've they've won they 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 defeated me with my comic book characters <laughs> i've accepted this i've just moved on with my life but you can make money so you should make a video about it <laughs> i should do that yeah you're right actually money money is good so. yes money is very good <laughs> remind, me, remind me what your next video is andrew the the, the one that's Temple absolutely yeah when you could be doing madam web for example I could, money is good listen, i could but i'm stubborn about this movie because <laughs> temple of doom is so shit i'm i'm i actually I have a running a running bet i'm not sure who's going to finish their video first andrew with his uh temple of doom video or uninspired with his old boy video you guys have been making them for like may the same 8th. amount of time <laughs> may 8th i'm just saying coming. whichever one of you guys gets gets the video out first after all this promise then yeah oh yes backface you know i will what? be doing a Dune 2 video once mm -hmm. I see andrew it. will probably make money off of that temple of doom video anyways because people like temple of doom um and that is considered uh <sighs> one of the more classic films so if really? anything he'll get all that hate money there I'm you go. butchering their sacred cow and they'd hate to see it and they're exactly. going to watch the entire thing and leave a par paragraphs upon paragraphs in my comment section <laughs> only to give me money. There you I go. win. Mm -hmm. You got to monetize We're, we're not doing range. it for money. We're doing yeah, it for a shitload of money. <laughs> uh, so I guess you um, gave up on your farming video Rebel Mood related whatever. Andrew? Mm -hmm. Wait, I zoned out completely. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you gave up on your uh, Rebel Moon farming simulator video. No, I have that. I'll I'll finish it after I'm done with the Temple of Doom. I'm oh, sorry, okay. farming simulator, Rebel Moon. <laughs> what? I uh, long story. I started like critiquing the village people and started <laughs> like in terms of in terms of world building. I was curious about how they like made any money or like how their crops worked and then i did a bunch of research into like medieval technology uh versus like how much they were able to yield um because that's pretty much the technology that they're going off of in rebel moon um and found it was un unrealistic that they could farm that much bushels th that they said in the movie Overall, the the criticism that I was rambling rambling on about in the script doesn't even matter because the movie is beyond more I... terrible than what yeah, actually I... than my farming criticism. I but would my, love to just watch the video. I was so on the obsessed. Farming. Yeah, that's I would pretty. Like yeah. To see that. <laughs> I'm curious. There's three now. pages right now of my script that are just dedicated to farming, and I like what I I I've gone down like this. There's this like British Academy. That specifically studies medieval agriculture, and I've just been like reading a bunch of articles from that college. I I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. I don't I, think you know, crabs in the Transformers film. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much where I am. When is part two of Rebel Moon due out? April, June, July, May, oh, May April. or June? 
Mm. Oh, so it's already been filmed and everything. Yeah, okay. yeah, they got filmed April, at the same time. April nineteenth, ah. I think, is the is the due date. Because I think he knew if he released that and waited for you know the reception, probably wouldn't have got, gotten. Oh yeah, approved. April nineteenth. I wouldn't <sighs> approve it. Holy shit! I don't know. I don't know why he doesn't just like stop. Yeah, well, that stop. or yeah, just release, stop existing. Just release stop, stop. the extended cut of the first part so that, like, don't give him any ideas. Understand no, no more or ideas. Understand. Stop. Stop. stop Listen, with Zack Snyder, please. Like Zack no, Snyder, give him a camera, but don't let him direct. He's good behind the camera, but don't let him direct. That is a good or point, right. though. Why are you waiting even... so long for the so-called extended cut if you want to build hype? Because clearly, nobody liked the first part release the director's cut which is supposedly better and drum up hype for your second one yeah because much like most relevant. director's cuts he has to go film those new scenes that he wrote after the fact like oh there's a director's I cut even... i fucking swear to god after rebel moon i don't even think zach is good behind the camera because that movie it's terribly shot it the is. composition for every shot is just wonky and, and the, the C... yeah the cg is terrible like the compositing yeah. Especially the ships and the way they interact with the ground. It's just like this. This seems like something from like the early two thousands, man. Like, what do you? Doing I feel like he grabbed budget? a bunch of like Unreal Engine assets off of the marketplace <laughs> and just slapped them into the movie, and we're like, "This is cool." It add looks some, like it's made add, in Unreal add Engine. Add some spikes to it. It'll be cool. Not even five. It looks like Unreal Engine four. Cool. <laughs> yeah. How much was Rebel Moon? How much did Netflix invest in that? Oh my god, a zombie movie! I forgot about that. Nah, I'll look it up. Hold on. I have no idea. Too much. <laughs> Apparently, his Army of the Dead is a part of the Rebel Moon universe, and because it is, it is, why wouldn't it be? Me and it is, yeah. Me and Sheev talks watched uh, Army so, of the Dead, and I think Army of the Dead is worse than Rebel Moon, which is crazy oh, to say. But uh, it, it's, it's horrendous. One hundred and sixty-six million shared good? amongst the two parts. So, what is that? What's half of that? Like 80, Eight. 80 million 83. 83 million. Yeah. So yeah, 83 million per movie. Dude. Uh Whew. that's that was that was money well spent. <laughs> like, I'm not I gonna know. go out of my way to defend Zack Snyder, but like man, when you go back and watch movies like 300, there's some really good like there's some bad and cheesy stuff in there too, but there's some really good cinematography in there, like really creative, like time ramping and stuff. I don't know. I liked it. It's a product of its time, though. When Because I yeah. watched 300 for the first time just last year. I kind of avoided it because it looked pretty dumb to me. And then I finally watched it. I'm just like, this is a movie that I would see in 2006. So it doesn't yeah. hold up very well. It doesn't age very well. So if anything, that should go to like show you kind of the, the, the breadth of Zack Snyder's talent that he can't even make cinema that's worth enjoying. 10 years later. Well, his movies are all basically stuck in that era. From yeah, that. they yeah. are. So mm -hmm. They're like for people who listen to Disturbed and like Limp Biscuit and stuff. Or you know? people who mail order brides <laughs> from Russia. Like, hey, <laughs> that's a deep, that is a deep <laughs> cut there. <laughs> yeah, you ever see someone really sad and hammered at the airport? That's why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they like big shine down fans are Snyder fans. Mm hmm. Um, I, I'm, I, I don't understand like where these people come from the woodwork every time he puts out a movie. It's you won't hear from them for a long time, and then the movie comes out. Like, they're people who the just found out about philosophy, and they're like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah, they were like me when I was like twelve, and The Matrix came out, and I thought I was a genius because I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I understand. Like, this movie's fucking deep. You don't even understand. That, that was if you, re of the if you rearrange movie, the letters right? of Neo, it spells one. Yeah, don't you get it? Isn't that clever? <laughs> there are fucking layers to this, man. If you look uh, really, really closely, you can see that they're not wearing gray or black suits. There's a slight tinge of green. They're coding. Yeah. Like, oh boy! Whenever Zack Snyder fans come out of the woodwork, I always imagine that scene in the Phantom Menace when the battle droids are released from the giant things <laughs> and then they deploy and turn on from the. <laughs> I think I think the <laughs> defining Snyder moment is he's built uh, well over a decade at this point of a career known for edginess as like the primary like meme level critique of like, wow, very fucking edgy. 
And then he makes like he gets to do his Justice League director's cut and he literally makes the fucking villain edgy as shit. Like there are just mm-hmm. spikes everywhere physically coming edge. out of this guy. Like <laughs> basically fucking edgy. I couldn't believe it. Uh that's his defining moment for me. And that's like of course like Snyder fans favorite <clears throat> movie of his too. Is like the Justice League director's cut. Zack Snyder is a pizza cutter all edge with no point. <laughs> now that's deep <laughs> that's a good one i'm gonna use that no, careful I, you're I, giving him ideas I, I think i i stole that from someone a while ago i don't remember where i, I i've seen that all jokes are that. stolen i'll just yeah. steal it from you and then i'll say sorry to the guy and be like sorry i got it from this guy and then blame you yeah go ahead it was that it was that special guy <laughs> do you think yeah. turner's in this stream i don't know i uh, know say his name three times and he'll appear <laughs> B.A. Turner, B.A. No, I'm not going to even gonna do it. I don't even. No, we can't uh, handle that. Call... Prick. Well, I'll just say this. Uh, yes. Uh, clearly, X-Men 97 didn't hold up as a topic to discuss. So yeah, probably, no, not gonna hold up very, probably not going to hold up very well as a series either. Yeah, and it gets even better because the next to topic is story. um is the Avatar the last, the last Bender, which is, I think, even more exciting than X-Men. So, yay. Uh, has anybody actually seen Avatar, the last whatever? I've seen nope. like nine tenths of the first episode, mostly because I had to be on here. Um, not particularly good. Um, yeah, it's actually quite bad. Like, I think the only person on that entire production that did a good job was the guys who did the backgrounds. Kind of like The Witcher. The backgrounds look great. Everything else is shit. Sorry, guys. <laughs> like... Um, <laughs> Like, there's just a lot of, like, they just explain the shit out of things that they don't need to. Like, you know, the guy's throwing rocks or whatever and moving the ground. And then it's like, oh, Earthbender. And it's like, yeah, we get it. You don't have to say it. It's just like a million things like that. Um, There's a lot of quirkiness from the cartoon that just does not come across yeah, well. Yeah. Live action. Like the sky, what is it? The sky buffalo? I forget what they're called. Oppo. Like, sky bison. Oppo. Oppo. Sky bison. That's it. Bison. Um. I only know that because the, it makes such a huge really point of it being a sky bison. It's like, have you seen my sky bison? And then it turns up and he hugs it and he says, "Sky That's bison." Sky bison. Yeah. 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 Sky <laughs> bison. Um, just before we continue with this immensely exciting topic, I know Dark Hour has to leave us. Yeah, um, I, I have nothing to say about this anyway. I would have just been dead weight. Well, I was probably dead weight for most of the stream anyway. So. <laughs> On the contrary, we always love having you here. Um, do you want to plug anything before you head off? Uh, yeah, sure. So obviously, I'll be doing a Dune two review. Um, I'm already working on it, but I'm not gonna obviously I'm not gonna drop it before because it's pointless to drop before the movie actually comes out but uh yeah other than that we got uh two hoes is still going uh pretty strong next week we have well this week we have ron mars of green lantern fame is going to be doing an interview with us and uh after that we have a few movies one of which is i believe on the 16th of march as you guys will be on with uh, us talking about the matrix what are the odds since we brought that up like four times Cyn- cynic must have known that's what i was going to talk about <laughs> I was typing the bag face to get on. I didn't even hear the last thing you said. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. I'll just I'll just replug it again. On March 16th, I'll have both Little Platoon and Movie Cynic on to talk about the Matrix for uh for two hoes. So yeah, yeah thanks for the reminder. I needed that and <laughs> yeah. um I'll contribute to that one for sure. Yeah. Hopefully. Looking forward to that. Ho- ho- hopefully you'll contribute. You just said it's like your favorite movie ever. So yeah, <laughs> I can't I can't <laughs> not just, unless I'm you, you show up and just like no and are just like I got nothing to say. I'm gonna be like no. bullshit. He's just <laughs> so <laughs> high. So high out of his mind, he's just sitting there like, yeah. But uh, thank you for having me on again. You know, it's been a while since I've been on here. Uh, Oh, and nobody, I'm surprised nobody has mentioned the extremely nice uh, canvas art that I had made of you guys. I'm very upset about that. Not a single person mentioned it. Oh, I saw it. That's real? I did see it. (laughs) Real. That's (laughs) fucking cool. It's nice. I like it. It is really cool. Yeah, it's uh people had mentioned had mentioned the um uh the the old green screen background. I was like, I'll just I'll just remake it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Okay. Well, I see some Batman books back there too. I have those. I have uh yeah, those yeah. Uh, that's specifically the one on the right. No man's land. That's that one. So hmm. but yeah, I have books everywhere here. I mean it's it's, it's I'm always surrounded by books. 
Oh well, yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do actually. I read comics. I don't read novels. I read graphic novels. Like a yeah. nerd version of Boba Fett. You grew up surrounded by books. I grew up so. surrounded by books. <laughs> there is that well thank you for coming i'm sure we'll see you again soon march the 16th if not before yeah and yes i was wearing pants i'm just wearing uh just, <laughs> i'm not i'm just wearing comfortable pants because i sit here for okay. a long time so. <laughs> i am too no shame if, you, if you'd got up with no pants on then you would not oh have been yeah that would have been interesting no. that would have been a, we're not we're <laughs> not doing a boogie on stream here at all no don't worry i would never do that to you guys but i'm gonna head out <laughs> thanks for having me on see you soon all right thanks good Bye. to see you Bye. You um, were then... oh, sorry. I sent Bagface an invite because he said I I thought he would be editing right now. Just that oh. oh, uh, he's not that's editing. Why he's I being a bad little him. slave. <laughs> that's why I didn't invite him. But uh, he said he has watched Avatar. So um, yeah, let's get him on. Well, maybe get him on. Seems to be. I wonder how much because <laughs> I got to the end of that first episode and I'm like. I don't know if I'm going to keep going. Oh, okay. I yeah, same thing. I, I I watched the first two episodes only because we were talking about it on this stream, which we're only doing because there's nothing else happening in the world. I was, was going to um, watch it and then I slept for three hours. So, I mean, you Constellation out. came out this past week, and that's pretty good on Apple uh, TV. Uh, it is. Yeah, there you Bag go. Face, so you watch I watch everything. I'm a whore. I'm a, I'm a whore for the, for, for the eyes. I'm an eyes whore. Take it all, baby. Um, okay, first, I know I missed your Dune 2 stuff because I was editing, but I saw that shit yesterday. Ugh. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> did, so, did, it's, did, it seems Did anyone cringe. show up? Uh, no, no one showed up. I was really sad. I was hoping Zendaya would show up because uh, Denis Villeneuve showed up to the last time I, I watched Dune, but... Uh, yeah, no, there was no one, but uh, it was okay because I I came in my pants enough times uh, during the movie. <laughs> it's insane, but Avatar. Um, there's some good aspects to the show. I, I, I'm I can see why someone of the likes of Platoon would really not enjoy this show because the writing is god awful. It is <laughs> like beyond terrible, um, and it's really hard for me because I'm a huge fan of the the cartoon. I've watched it like three times over. Um, it's hard for me to not compare the two, but if I try my hardest not to compare, um, it's not the worst show. The choreography is incredible. The effects are really good, which is refreshing to see. Uh, not Some the stuff them. on the volume. The volume is terrible, but you can tell when like an artist is actually going to work and you know they're they're bending things. It it looks really good. The actors are all pretty good. They're just given horrible things to say. So um, yeah. That's the sense I get from bad. the clips that I've seen. The actors seem like they're trying, but they're given really terrible material, and they also don't look like yeah. they're directed well at all. Yeah. No, and like the entire, like the entire point of the show is like the whole fucking purpose of the main character is he is a kid who doesn't want the responsibilities that he has, and you understand that in the live action show but only because he is a small young person they don't like let him be a kid at all he doesn't yeah. get any moments to there's so many moments in the show that are the best moments in the show where he's like sledding down a hill and, and just doing funny child shit but then when you actually get to a point where there's stakes and he has to like buck up and do something it feels so much more rewarding because you just watch this kid that you know is a kid that you've seen be a kid be thrown into this situation where like he has to save the world, and yeah, that you, you, you know, some you know he doesn't want the um. Well, the, the, yeah, the Asinai dialogue is the point because you know that he doesn't want the power he's got because he tells you that explicitly to camera, as good as to camera. <laughs> I, I want to the next person who says, right, I'm going to put a cute animal on screen because this is an excuse for my character to break the fourth wall without actually breaking it and just tell the audience everything they need to know about who he is and what he thinks. I want that person arrested. It's such a fucking annoying <laughs> thing. Yeah, this is the first episode. He, he, there's a little fucking sky bison thing and he walks up to it and he says, oh, but I, I've got this power. I really don't want to have this power. I just want to be a kid. I like doing this and that it. and the other, but I've been given a power that I really don't want to have. It's a terrible responsibility that I have to take. I was like, fucking show me this. Don't talk to your fucking bison. That's cheating. I could hear the you bison screaming like, can from fly Canada. high when it needs to. <laughs> <laughs> like watching uh, that scene, I was literally like, Platoon is going to hate this. <laughs> I was hoping that you wouldn't watch it because, like, no. And the worst part about it is he says all that, and then the entire show is him basically being like, 
I have these responsibilities I have to do. Like he doesn't get any moments. He just like, like episode two, he just kind of accepts it. And then is like, no, I have to be a very serious person now. It's just really awkward. How does it compare to the, uh, the M night Shyamalan? Oh my God. It's, it <laughs> destroys that movie. I think people on the internet have forgotten how bad that movie is. Cause it's been a long time. That movie is that movie wild. Is awful like the random cutting is crazy in that oh movie. dude the bending just in that transition movie, they they mm. have to do like eight seconds of of martial arts to nobody and then the wind kind of blows it's like yeah no that movie's terrible it, it it's much better it's it's not even i wouldn't say it's bad it's just like okay it's like a five six out of ten it's it's just they, nowhere near as good as the original animated no. series like at all and it's because they don't <clears throat> like it's this weird thing with like Western media where they they can't like have their characters be non-serious at any point. It's it, it brought up in my brain like if a Western company tried to do Dragon Ball Z, it's like if they just made Goku like a super serious hardcore dude all the time. You'd be like, yeah, that's cool, I guess. But the cool part of Goku is like you see him be a goofball and not take anything seriously. So when he does get serious, you're like, okay, it's go time. Yeah. And there's just like, there's some broken cell in, in Western media that like, doesn't understand that characters need range. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're either like, Ooh, super stoic hero that like will break the fourth wall and make meta jokes sometimes, or they're just a goofball, like, comedic relief there's no I think that the impression is taken hold that yeah if, if you're in live action you must be serious because this is adult entertainment but if it's, it's drawn it's action. a cartoon it's for kids and so it's fine yeah. to be cheerful it's the nice thing about the one piece show is the one piece show actually yeah. keeps from what i understand anyway a lot of the the tonal jumps and tonal variety of the original whereas this i've only seen the first two episodes but i don't get the impression that the avatar show is going to be chock full of, of cutesy humor the best bit about it is probably Again, I'm not that familiar with the animated original, but the best thing about it probably is what is lingering from that show, which is the vague sense that there is a fleshed out world here. It's got quite a lot of characteristics as a group, you know, many different peoples. They're all quite well drawn out. Um, there's, there's a bit of, of nice sort of romance about sort of, you know, the big coal fired power ships on the fucking icy seas. That's all nice stuff. It's just a shame that everyone who populates it, really. Um, some of the older actors I thought were okay, they were clearly doing their best. But it really does have a huge quality jump between the younger actors, and I don't just mean the kids in there, like the teenage ones, and the like the 20-somethings who were probably the worst in the entire thing, and then yeah, the older yeah. actors who have clearly got quite a lot of experience and they know what they're doing. <laughs> the, you, you kind of understand why they cast the main character with the kid that they did once you see him do the fight choreography, because he's really, really good at fight choreography. Same with uh, the kid who plays Zuko, the guy with like the scar on his eye. I don't know mm -hmm. if you see him in episode. I'm pretty sure you see him in episode one. But so like, you've seen the whole season then. Or? Yeah, yeah. I, I watched. Oh, okay. I was gonna do a video on it, and then I was like, eh. I, so I the doing choreography does like, get. Yeah, the oh, choreography yeah. does get better then. Okay. It's really inventive too. Like it reminded me of like classic martial arts choreography, which I really enjoy, like Jackie Chan style, like using environments and yeah. and the way they use their bending, the way they utilize it during fight scenes, super super creative. So there was. It's weird because there's so many aspects of this show where you can tell people really cared. And then there's other aspects where it just feels like it was written by AI. Kind of, it's so weird. Yeah, they there's tend to lines. dump stuff down. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know what the urge is to make animated series or films or what, whatever that were like well beloved or did well or whatever or have a cult following to convert that into live action because not everything translates well from animation to live action. Like Disney's sort of learned their lesson on that, doing all these CG remakes of the original animated films. And it's like, this doesn't work. Like the only reason why you believe Simba's, you know, Simba's because it's got eyebrows, you know, it's, there's a human face strapped to a, <laughs> strapped to a lion. When you make it live action, it's just a lion now. <laughs> it can't act. It's weird to me though, because this show, the reason I would say that this show couldn't be done live action is the bending. And that's the one thing they got right. Yeah, they did that. Yeah, a lot of those yeah. effects are pretty cool. Like the like the thermal sort of distortion you get for the oh, air bending. I thought that was so a pretty cool solution. Yeah, but I gotta and... say the fire effect. It looks like it looks like a stock like uh, like cin or um, was it Cinema 4D? 
like stock <laughs> effect that yeah. it's like why aren't you guys using voxels this could look so much better <laughs> it, it gets it gets better it does okay there's there's some like hand-to-hand -hand combat with some of the fire uh effects that are pretty incredible yeah because most of what we get in episode one is a lot of digi doubles with like pretty seamless handoffs but like yeah. When they're when they are the digital character, it's like that's very digital. Oh yeah, this could yeah, have used some, a lot some more of it's time. Pretty rough. Not bad for a show though. I always give shows a bit of a break because the the time crunch is usually pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. I feel like there's probably going to be a second season of this show, and it'll probably be a lot better because I feel like the the criticisms they're going to get aren't going to be anything that's going to like make them Kathleen Kennedy and just like triple down on everything bad. Um, so I feel like it'll probably end up being a little bit better because they're so close. It's close. Like, it's it's right there, but it's just not there. They need better writers, man. The writing is just yeah. so bad. It blows my you're... mind, too, because the One Piece writing was, like, good bad. Like, it was I got to watch One but... Piece. I didn't see One Piece. So I don't know the anime yeah. at all, so I was sort of... I don't know the anime either, but actually I really enjoyed that as a show. There's a couple of episodes yeah. in the middle which are, like, they fall flat, but the rest of it is it's surprisingly good. It's much better than it probably has a right to be. Um, but it's Netflix. quite That's tightly written. Too, right? I yeah. think it is, yeah, yeah. But okay. it's it's tightly written. It's it's actually got fleshed out characters. It knows roughly what to do with them. Um and you know, it, it's got its own humor, it's it's quite zany, it's not afraid to be what it is. Um it doesn't have lines like this Avatar show has. One of the lines is something like, <laughs> We can't be benders, so we have to be better than benders. It's like, I don't know if it's the case in America, but in the UK, Bender is like gay, like uh, uh, slang for gay person, which is just yeah. funny. <laughs> I was about um, to say, I mean, something different over there. Uh, no, Bender over here just means you've been drinking for a long time or some kind of <laughs> substance abuse for extended periods. But uh, yeah. yeah, like if they tighten up the writing, I mean, there's a lot of potential here. And like the original, like the original is quite... Like, I'm not super familiar with it. I didn't, like, sit down and watch the whole thing. But what I have seen, I really enjoyed. Like, uh, is it Iroh? Uncle Iroh? Yeah. Like, phenomenal character. There's no way. There's no way they're going to get it right with the well, writing they, that they have. He's, he's probably the best one in the show, actually, which is surprising. Like, him and Zuko, they almost nailed them, which I was surprised good act, by. But good it, actor, too. It feels uh, like the I actor. Think, yeah. Is, is it the same guy from uh, Kim's Convenience? Yeah. Is it that guy? Yeah. And they just... Okay. They, Pretty much just straight rip a lot of their conversations and their lines from the animated show so yeah. it's a little safer <laughs> yeah because there's huge potential with that character but yeah with the writing that they have like uh, it's there's going to be a lot of misfires i think but well, yeah and the the beauty of the anime and a, a lot of anime out there especially like shonen anime i, I don't know there's no um uh, i don't have uh uninspired here so we can't nerd out on anime but um <laughs> they do like huge series long arcs because they usually know where it's going to end. Like Dragon Ball never ends, but usually they know where the season's going to end. So it's like the whole, there's arcs within every season or like every chunk of every season. But then you have this huge overarching like character growth and it feels like they've already kind of lost the opportunity to do that because the, the cool thing about Avatar is by the time you get to the end, Aang has finally fully kind of accepted his role and like goes into serious mode and you take him so much more seriously because you watch this person go from like a kid playing with a fidget spinner and like trying to get girls to like him to like taking on fire gods you're like ooh, okay yeah. cool yeah and they've kind of already missed the opportunity to do that so that's a little depressing yeah. but well if you want to if you want us to believe that this character's grown you have to show them be a child first right yeah exactly. And we don't like we haven't really seen that we just get him yelling at the camera i am a child <laughs> i'm not ready look but at me like, i'm small it's like you're going for the chosen one refuses the call thing but like you're not doing the groundwork i mean well it's such a classic trope like chosen one refusing the call of, of that's literally the trope of dune too as well as like yeah well that's that's like the basis of monomyth right that's like why yeah. Yeah. people resonate with stories like you don't have to do it but if you're gonna like do it uh like do it properly it's endearing because it's a cool play on like he's a kid, so he doesn't want to accept it. Like it's like a slight difference, but it's it almost gives it more credence because it like eventually it feels really old watching someone be like, "No, I can't accept my destiny." But when they're a kid, you're like, "Okay, I get it." You like empathize a little easier. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 organic that way, right? Because he is a kid, and you're watching him grow up. 
which is why it's such a good story for kids because you know they can and relate adults. to it I'm trying to and adults <laughs> <laughs> No, I watch. Oh, kids I'm not shows. Disney for that at all. I love kids' movies. Some of my favorite movies are kids' movies. I mean, I Toy still Story. Best movies in history are kids' movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, with the concerns that you guys have raised with Avatar, do you suspect that something similar will probably happen to Naruto now that that's getting the Hollywood treatment? <laughs> Is it getting Probably's a movie right. though? It's, it's getting, getting a, a movie. Yeah. Um, the the guy that did Shang Chi, he's in charge mm. of it. Right. 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 Um, but like, it's, it'd be nice, maybe. Well, I'm just, I'm just thinking because there are some similar themes, right, between Avatar and Naruto. It's, it's about, it's following a boy kind of grow into his responsibility and take charge, kind of, of, of his destiny and kind of grow into the role that he's meant to take over, right? Um, so I just imagine it's, it's going to again be one of those things, probably where they make it a little bit too serious, they condense a little bit too much, and they rush through because I, I also imagine they'll try to open the door to make it like a a Naruto universe <laughs> of source because there's so much to explore there. Um but yeah I'm just I'm just curious what your guys' thoughts thoughts are on that if you've watched Naruto at all. I'm I not. haven't but isn't it like a really like long lived anime? Like it's yeah. been it going is. on for like decades. Yeah. Yeah. So to condense that down into a film, like uh, I don't know. I- be very interesting to see but depends like if if they just try to take one of the first arcs and make it into a movie i feel like they could probably do it pretty pretty well because it is a show with a lot of filler yes naruto yeah or as we say up here naruto naruto (laughs) that's how i thought it was too naruto (laughs) Uh, i feel like there's there's a world in where a naruto movie can work um, but it's it's very different than Avatar, I guess, because Naruto is like n- like he's childish, but he's not childish in a childish way. He's childish in like an annoying, like over uh, over like confident kind of way. So I feel like I think that's the reason I've not seen any. I think I probably put it on, watched ten seconds, thought you're fucking annoying, and turned yeah. it off. <laughs> yeah, I only got like a hundred episodes in, and I was like, I, was I like, only wow, got a hundred episodes. <laughs> <laughs> the payoff is so worth it, though, bag face. It's, is it? Uh, okay. Yeah, it really is. If anything, just like there's a – you can find a list online of just like the essential episodes to watch and go yeah. through that. But it the payoff is so worth it. I promise you. Maybe, maybe I'll do it. Well, and, it is a very beloved IP. Like I know tons yeah. of people that have watched every bit of it. But I, I don't know. Like, I've never been a huge anime guy in the first place. So It's like – they're trying to Hollywood's trying to make it the next comic book movie thing. Yeah. Which same with video yeah. games. It took yeah. them looking at the comic book industry and they're like, why is manga so successful? Why is Crunchyroll pulling in Netflix numbers? We we want a piece of that. And it's like, well, you got to write like that, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> you got to and... animate like that, which very few animation studios today can. It took... At least at least as consistently and quickly as it would take to do something like an anime. Yeah, they're like pretty much slave workers. There's a lot of drama about that in the anime community right now, actually. That's like every industry in Japan right now. <laughs> what I, yeah. From what I hear. Um, uh, how'd they make Godzilla minus one so cheaply? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> slave <Hollywood>? labor. <laughs> it love- wasn't slave labor. They installed a new kitchen so they could eat while they were working. <laughs> Let's go! It's indoor plumbing. They installed plumbing. nuts, guys. They installed nuts. No, that's Apple factories in China. Japan isn't quite that bad. <laughs> we get such efficient phones out of it, so it's all worth it in the end. Oh, yeah, I love capitalism. Yes, it's brilliant. Do um, more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Anything um, um, left on, on this, or should we wrap up with some Super Chats? We can wrap up. Sure. I'm also thinking because it's Cynic's birthday today, everyone, in chat. I don't think chat knows this yet, so happy birthday to Cynic, and we don't want to keep him from his very exciting evening of work and work. Cheesecake, apparently. And a slice of cheesecake. Bangs, all right? And maybe yeah. also wrestling. Yes, wrestling will be on while I'm writing. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps me calm in the background. Um... <laughs> <laughs> 
well, if it's all right, what I think we'll do, because okay, there's a set we can go through relatively quickly. Obviously, we did not have time to do a load of the Madden Web ones because that stream overran. Uh, because we were joined randomly and excitingly by um by Chio Hidari and Coco, which was very fun. Um, but it did mean that we've got a few backs up, which I think I've saved all of. Um, so if you don't mind doing a few Madden Web ones first, and then we'll wrap up after that with um with the ones that have come in from today, just so we haven't missed anyone. Uh, I won't be able to pull these up because I am in apparently a premature boomer, and I don't know how to look into the back end to find them. So I literally screenshotted them. And now I'm looking at the <laughs> oh You can go back into the... Oh, wait, no, you can't, because the stream is re-uploaded. Never mind. Yeah, well, that was what I was thinking. Yeah. So I thought, just to be safe, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually screenshot them. Um, so from last week's uh, stream, Mega Spider-Man 4, uh, five euros. Hello to everyone. What is your favorite and least favorite Spider-Man film and why? And which, if any, is best and worst out of Venom, Venom 2, Morbius, or Madam Web? That's two questions. That's not allowed. Yeah. The best <laughs> out of those last four is probably going to be the first Venom film. Not Morbius, the worst, obviously. <clears throat> the, the worst is now Madam Web. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, no. Mor Morbius is worse. Come on. Is it? No. No, I, I would say. Uh, um, Madam Web's more Madam is pretty. Yeah. I enjoyed Madam Web. Morbius made me want to die. So. See, I'm the other way around. Morbius? Is Morbius was comically bad, so I enjoyed it, and there were like vampires, and I like vampires. And then Madame mm -hmm. Web was just boring and not in a good comical way. See, I so laughed I'm... a lot watching Madame Web. Which yeah, I, I say about Morbius. Same. Morbius, I just went, oh, these poor freaking CG artists. Like, Morbius, they, they I can't went even see what's happening. Here. <laughs> I went to see on release date with some friends, and the entire time the, the theater was uh, like empty it was only us so the entire time we were just memeing the entire movie and yelling at the screen so nice morbius is a brilliant film for that <laughs> reason <laughs> it was so good just, morbius just left no impression on me at all whereas madam web i thought was really funny but only because it was so terrible so like objectively yeah. i would say madam web is the worst yeah but it's actually it so was bad, more enjoyable good. yeah exactly yeah it's yeah. the worst but because it's the worst it's also enjoyable um, but that bit is subjective. And the other part of the question was everybody's favorite and least favorite Spider-Man film. Um, I, I'm going to be boring and say Spider-Man 2, I guess. Probably. Uh, stole my answer. Yeah, I agree with you. Spider-Man yeah. 2 is probably the best one. Same Sam Raimi. Answer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, into the so Spider-Verse. Oh, of course. Yeah. I still need to see what, those. Into, into the Spider-Verse is better than Spider-Man 2. It's just <laughs> fact. I'm sorry. Uh, wow. Worse is probably Amazing Spider-Man 2. I'd no, go. Spider, Spider Man yeah. Three is worse than that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Spider Man Three is. Really, I don't know. I think really Spider Man bad. Three might be a bit better. It's still terrible. Yeah, I I rewatched Amazing Spider Man Two recently because we we did the first one on MMM a couple weeks ago, and everything it, it's all over the place. That second movie, where at least with Spider Man Three, it's like there's a lot they're trying to do, and they tried to get it to work together at least and put together a plot, whereas like. Amazing Spider-Man 2, it's just like, you can see how much studio interference there was. There's nothing salvageable about that entire movie. You can, but then on the other hand, I suffer from acute second-hand embarrassment when people do things that I find really embarrassing. It's it's like, it's actual <laughs> physical pain. I'm watching fucking Tobey Maguire <laughs> dancing down the street. I just, it's like, it's, oh, it's, it's like torture. Waterboarding is less effective. So I'm, I'm going to say Spider-Man 3 just because I hate that scene so much. I don't remember anything else about the film. <laughs> it's the, the, best only thing the, I'll defend, the only thing i'll defend about spider-man 3 is they really nailed the sandman effect but outside of that i didn't care for it i mean i think i liked it better than spider-man 2 like the amazing spider-man 2 now my memory's kind of foggy on this that's the one where like jamie fox is the electric guy yeah mm -hmm. but, but like you, you don't really know it's jamie fox I'm and then there's this the horrible there's this horrible fight scene where it's like this music video, ping pong, electrical thing yep. happening, and it's yep. fucking mm -hmm. terrible. I like how he, it's like Skrillex music whenever he turns on his powers. Yeah. Um, yeah. And goes electric <laughs> or something. I wish that was in Homecoming. Or not Homecoming. No Way Home. Oh, if that was in there, it would be peak. Um, <laughs> no Way Home was but also, fun. The second the, half, anyway. Yeah. The, the uh, Yeah, it's probably... It's probably Tasm 2. Tasm 2 is so terrible. Mm -hmm. 
It has probably my favorite suits. That suit is really good for Andrew. And that's yeah, probably yourself? Best suit. Hold on. You like <laughs> yes, my body, do you? <laughs> what can I say? Garfield. I'm I'm a fan of Andrew Garfield too. I just I didn't care for those those movies. The first one's a lot better than the second one, but it still is a mess even the first it's, one. It's yeah. yeah. It's not particularly great. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the only thing I remember about great. Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man great, 1 is that awful lizard person at the end, which looks like absolute <laughs> shit. That's the only <laughs> thing I remember from that one. I'm going to turn the entire city to lizards. Why? <laughs> uh, because it's cool. Because I'm like a lizard. Sh- it's like a shit Rick and Morty villain. It's just, it makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, his, his reasoning was he wanted to eliminate weakness from the world. So that's why everyone needed to be so toxic. Turn to lizards. We're going to turn everyone yeah. into lizards. <laughs> I know it's Guys, still terrible. It's yeah. the I grew my arm back. <laughs> like, it's not. No, even that's clever. so funny like, when he like he de lizards and he like his little nub of a hand comes back. <laughs> and he, he's just like no, <laughs> and then he just starts uh, sitting there like thinking about life. <laughs> dude, Spider Man Three is the worst out of all the Spider Man movies though, because as cringe as that is, like Topher Grace looking up at the sky in a church and being like. Please oh, kill Peter great. Parker, God. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I forgot Dear what God. I suck. Forgot yeah. That is the origin of the channel because that was the first time where I was so let down by a movie and I went to the midnight show. My friends and I stayed up and bitched and complained about this movie until like sunrise because <laughs> it sucked yeah. so fucking bad. That's oh, where it started oh, right there. That was Cynic's Joker moment. Yeah, no. that was the super the origin villain story. origin story. <laughs> I, I feel like myself into a lizard Morty. I'm lizard Morty. I'm, I'm lizard rare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can I can hear it in his voice and everything. Oh no! Right. Um, Turn myself into a lizard Morty. <laughs> lizard rare. Big reveal. <laughs> I can't wait to take uh, this lizard yeah. dick for a test drive. <laughs> yeah, <God. laughs> <laughs> anyway, um. Anthony Hack for for two euros forty nine. When is the next next Rings of Power video? Um, before season two. <laughs> when, I don't even know. I don't even know when that's coming out anymore. But before that, I'll have finished it. That's the promise. Sean Calloway for twenty dollars. Were Adam Scott and Emma Roberts supposed to be Peter Parker's parents? Because while Mary was his mother's name, then was his uncle, which would make his brother Richard Parker Peter's dad a cuck. Um, well, <laughs> Richard's oh, no, away. They, yeah, they say he's just cousins. away. Or sorry, yeah. a sister-in-law. Sister-in-law. There we go. Yeah, he is the uncle in, but he, it's not technically Peter Parker's uncle because we're not legally allowed to say that Peter Parker is anything to do with this. So he's just uncle of name redacted. And maybe that's why Uncle Ben took him in because he's actually the father anyway. And he's like, Fuck, oh. I really yeah. gotta take care of this kid. But you know, the fun thing is because I, I was finishing up the script the other day, and it never. <laughs> there's all this still stuff which just jumps out as having missed the first several times I've seen it. Like one of the final scenes. Madam Webb is is in the hospital, and one of the like nameless girls she saved says, uh, "Ben's really enjoying being an uncle because he likes having all of the fun and none of the responsibility." Mm-hmm. And Madam Webb says, "That's what he thinks." So that kind of suggests that Madam Webb knows that Peter Parker's parents are going to die, and she does nothing about it. She just pre-quips that his parents Canon will die. Event. Yeah, canon event. But she uh, also knows that <laughs> Uncle Ben will die too. It so all makes she's sense just. Now. She's just she's taking smiling. the piss out of an orphan. She's smiling while she does it. Yeah, it's great. Well, yeah, because um, she's like, I was an orphan. Now you're going to be a little boy. Fuck you. <laughs> she is. Like I still the really hate kids. She is so unlikable, though. Like, I didn't like her in the first, like, 15 seconds of the film. I'm just like, you're such a bitch. And then, like, she doesn't take the drawing from the kid that she saved. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with this person or this just, character? Just I guess. watch Fifty Shades of Grey. It's the same character, but at least she's naked for half the movie. And <laughs> no, it's like it really is like you asked AI a prompt of like, what? Um, how would you portray a character that is uh, that has a traumatized childhood and doesn't like children? Uh, and it would answer like, well, have you had the character? Uh, be handed something by a child and they recoil in disgust. No, like, it's that's just one what of those, she does. It's every the, response you get is like, no, more hateful. No, more hateful. Yeah. <laughs> more on the nose. More hate. More hate. More hate. <laughs> Less subtlety, please. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, then it was Loki's wager for five dollars with the amount of cars that she stole in the movie. I think Cassie's real superpower is getting away with Grand Theft Auto. That is yeah, true. And, and potentially <laughs> killing a person because she took an active ambulance away from a response. <laughs> it's just like, and then she what? drives it off that a second-story building through a Calvin Klein advert and takes out the villain in midair while he's holding a grenade, which explodes a taxi. And at no point do the police come ever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they cannot be bothered with that fireworks factory. That was the one yeah. where her boss got fucking clobbered because he was yeah. drinking and driving. Yeah, and like so well, we they... all know the real hero is Pepsi. At least the Pepsi's. No, the <laughs> real hero of this movie is Uncle Ben because he saved a life and he has no superpowers. Like he's the only one who actually did anything really extraordinary, <laughs> in my opinion. Like True. he dived into the water, ripped a fucking door off, and was just nonchalant about it. Like, yeah, Shut welcome up. back. <laughs> I see um, why she's cucking him. Like. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I, this is this is the part of which I've I've cocked up because you know how in the back end of Streamyards when you hover over a message and it gives you the opportunity to show it, but it also blocks out the message with color so you can't actually read what it is. Oh. Well, I screenshotted it and I had, I've got my mouse over the top one, so I'm going to have to <laughs> stare like really closely. Hold on. I think it says. Rolando A. Ramirez for ten dollars. Blackface Trudeau, give us your wisdom. I think that's what it says. <laughs> that must be for you, Ben. <laughs> that's not well, me. Well, we had a, a a bunch of people messaged me after last week's B up, be like, "You have a a black guy from L.A. who works in the industry, and you're just sitting there the whole time with a blackface yeah. Trudeau avatar." <laughs> I, I, heard, I tuned in midstream, and I'm like, "Wow, they got that guy." And I like did a double take, and I'm like, "Of course that's Vex." And then I just turned my phone off. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't got a letter yet from the government. Uh, oh, that just went into effect though, so I'll be okay for a little bit longer. Don't worry, don't worry. But the Wait, YouTube you, channel is probably going to get taken down. Can you not be arrested for things you say on our streams? Is that a thing uh, that's kind of just passed? Yeah. I can, can now get up to a life term in prison for saying certain things online in Canada. Oh shit! Wow. Well, they yeah. they made hate speech illegal, but they failed to define what hate speech is. So oh, it can gosh. actually be whatever they decide in the moment. Oh, that's so. great. Exactly. So BBD, if my, baby. Yeah, if my channel disappears one day, you know why. <laughs> so we can, does that mean we can sort of bait you with things that we know will get you in trouble? So if I was to say, "Hey, Vex, who's Justin Trudeau's father?" <laughs> oh, it's Fidel. Fidel Castro. Castro. I mean, uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> we all know that. But then you can get arrested and die. So, you know, that'll be fun if you piss us off. Um, then it was yet a year for $4.99. I heard this movie made Vex into a Snyder fan. That's my Thursday co host for another, yeah, I was another say, podcast. That's great. <laughs> uh, we also had, oh God, My Melias. We'll go with that for 125 things that I do not know. It's like a P with a line through it. Does anybody know what that currency is? Fancy nope. P. It's uh, it's a hundred hundred. Yeah, uh, do one hundred twenty five P's. We'll go with that. <laughs> in the, yeah, it's called a Prince Albert, I think. Prince Albert. What Filipino... country is that the currency of? A peso. <laughs> <laughs> Philippine pesos. Oh, is what okay, we'll go with that. Wait, Wait does it have two explain... lines in it? Uh, um, I no. Hold on. No. Wait. Yes, find it image. does. Sorry, yes. no, it does. My my screen is far away. Uh, okay, then it's a, f a Philippine peso, I think. Oh, good. From what Fantastic. Google says. We'll go with that. That was uh from my media, and he says shout out to Jedi Brooks. Love the channel. Please make more videos. I've binged them all. Love the little platoon and the rest too. Well, thank you, and I'm sure Jedi Brooks thanks you as well. He does indeed have a very good channel. Um, TGV Monster for two dollars said it's Madam Time. It, uh, yeah, it was last week. It's um, Madam Time. The alternative is it's Webbing Time, and both of those, like, neither of those work. So my video is like, it's, is it Webbing Time? Is it Madish? Fuck it, it's just time. That's all it is. It's, um, it's time. Time. Time's irrelevant. <laughs> Time's irrelevant. <laughs> like Madam Web. Not so spoiled milk for two dollars. The villain's suit was better in the comics. Was it? I've not. I don't know what the comic suit was. Any, anyone have opinions the on what? the villain's suit? The villain's oh, suit yeah, in the comics. 
It looked like uh, pajamas. Yeah, it was basically pajamas, I think. Yeah. Oh. I'm I'm like that before yesterday's stream. <laughs> How, yeah, how is that better? Because <laughs> I woke up like uh, this. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it explains the bare feet at least. Then hold on. <laughs> well, no, the bare feet are. I say in my review, like the bare feet in the comic books are because he can't cling to walls as well as Spider Man can, so he has to go shoeless. But in the movie, uh -huh. that he wears shoes when he is in his little stupid fucking not Spider Man costume, so like he has no reason. To not wear shoes other than just that's his foot fetish it's, and also the yeah. villain every line was adr like the whole movie what's with that yeah because they just rewrote it's, the whole thing it's because he talked like this the entire time and you can't really make out what anyone's saying when they talk like this the entire time <laughs> do you understand yeah. and he's like hiding an accent that i can't figure out and it was dry i said that too i said film. it was like a uh implacably or like an undetectable fucking accent but i think the I actor is there. french the actor i think is french so he might yeah, have been hiding french. 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 he's like from Al he's from algerian descent so like it's i don't know it's it's bizarre i call him all kinds of things in the, in the review <laughs> <laughs> from peppy Le Pew to like yeah i don't know peppy Le Pew. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's way more imaginative. I've just got evil and gay spider demon, and that's it. <laughs> I mean, that's gay pretty good. <laughs> that's a striking visual. <laughs> um, the next one I don't remember the relevance of, but I'm always happy to take a, a dump on Chris Stuckman's cornflakes. So Stuckman's reluctance <laughs> is uh, to be critical is because it's too negative slash mean, and that at this point, it's gaslighting the audience to just consume without question. That's from Jen Mai Cha for five communist dollars. Um, yeah, probably is that. I mean, is there anything left to be? We every time we cover Chris Stuckman, we say way more than Chris Stuckman says about himself, because we say anything at all. Um, I don't know. It, it's partly that. It's partly I suspect you know he, he's getting this film made. He doesn't want to be too mean about people he might be working with. I can understand the mentality. It's just that if you're going to say that I'm not actually allowing myself to talk about things because I have too many friends who will be upset then you should probably just stop the whole YouTube thing because you have nothing to offer. Well, that's the thing. Like, he doesn't... Like, he doesn't... He doesn't say anything egregiously offensive or anything. It's because he doesn't really say anything. Like, there's way worse people online that think they're good at, like, film criticism that just are, like, far worse. Like, uh, like Cosmonauts. He's, he's probably one of the most egregious. There's, like, uh, Shea Frillis. He's also pretty terrible um like there's I, I sometimes i don't understand the hate boner for stuckman because it's like he's just a guy doing stuff it's like there's far yeah, more egregious like people out there bothered in that's why he's uh, yeah. still around like he was just first yeah. so he's the, yeah it's like here yeah there is that but it's also that you know when he thinks the film is shit because he'll tell you that the video he's just made is not about the thing that he thinks is shit and then he'll say oh, yeah. just the, the, the most vague pap nonsense about nothing. And then that will somehow get views from some people. It's just, it's not really even content, I don't think. Um, th there's nothing about being a creator that stops you being honest when you're criticizing works of art. Like most creators are critical of what they make and they should be constructively critical about what other people make. And if you can't do that because you don't want to offend people, then you're not a critic. So screw you. Um, we then had from Rebecca Gold for five pounds. Vex, really? Blackface? Cynic, too much headroom and polluted to an excellent TV. Rebecca Gold, for anyone who doesn't know in the chat, is actually a man called Ian, um, which is very progressive. But he, no, Rebecca Gold is his character, and it's also the channel name, and he makes uh, independent media. He's making a, a short series on his character, Rebecca Gold, which is worth checking out if you haven't already. Um, he's occasionally on this show. Uh, so, yeah, definitely go take a look at him. Um, TGV Monster for $5. Disney needs to control their budgets. Godzilla minus one, $12 million. Looks better than a $287 million Marvels. Where is the money going? How anyone long know? did uh, Godzilla minus one take to make out of curiosity? Does anyone know? Ooh. Just because it's, what is it? it so it's estimated that it cost $15 million, but it looks like the director also wrote it and did basically all the VFX. So I'm just, how long did it take for that movie to get made? I do not know. Um, yeah. I could Google it. 
What does Google have to say? I, I imagine, like, I'm not saying it accounts for all the inflated costs, but I imagine having quick production probably skyrockets yeah. things quite a bit because the the movie the monster is that it just content 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 right there is no lag time anymore mm -hmm. i think pre-production was probably pretty easy at least from a general guess production was probably also pretty quick the longest was probably just post because of how good the cgi looks like they had to put time but like there's no way it there's no way that post-production was as quick as like a Marvel movie or a Western movie that so heavily says, relies on uh, the CGI. VFX took eight months and it were yeah. it was uh, 610 visual effects shots and there were 35 artists that did it. Ooh, that's a lot. 610 wow. is not that much. No, it's not. No. Uh, so 610 visual effects shots, 35 people, eight months. 35 people doing 610 shots that's a lot uh, but so that accounts for part of it what about pre-production and all that principal photography well, it looks like they uh, hadn't even set up the writing workshop to brainstorm ideas until 2019 so hmm. from then um trying to have a look uh march 17th to june 11th 2022 was filming mm-hmm um so and it started can... being written after covid so i mean probably you know oh after covid hold on after yeah. so 2021 or 2022 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 20 okay so we'll say about two to three years maybe mm -hmm. so that's actually on par then with hollywood yeah hmm. well i mean it also makes sense the fewer people doing it like the fewer people getting paid yeah yeah especially you know this isn't hollywood so they're not gonna yeah get paid uh like oh here's your production designer uh pay and here's your vfx artist pay and you also scrub the toilet so here's the janitor pay yeah <laughs> they true. give them like a you, lump sum of something you guys saw what the estimated budgets for gladiator 2 and joker 2 are right that came out this week isn't joker 2 pretty high or am i yeah. getting messed up Joker 2 is, I think it's close to 200 million, and Lady Gaga alone is making like 15 or 20 million dollars off of it. And then Gladiator 2 has ballooned to 310 million dollars. 310 million dollars? 310 million dollars. So it's going to flop oh no God. matter how much it makes. <laughs> Dude. I don't even know that there's this huge all over again. interest in seeing an, another Gladiator film. The first one was okay, fairly good for its day. Uh, does anyone is anyone champing at the bit to see another one? Not particularly. Without the main character that made the first one worth watching, either. Yeah. No, no one. I I don't know anyone who's hyped about that movie. Joaquin like Phoenix first... is getting paid twenty million. That's I'm surprised. Yeah, That's you got paid ten for the first one. It busted I'm, a well, billion I'm, dollars too. Well, I'm yep. surprised that Gaga is getting paid less than him, because Gaga is Gaga. Yeah, but who's who's like, oh, I didn't see Joker one, but I'm fucking seeing this one now. Lady Gaga's in it. That is well, a non-zero uh, number. Lady Gaga's not really an established established actor. Like, like she's nobody's going to the movies to see Lady Gaga. Right. right? That's so the fact that she's getting paid twelve million dollars is actually. Pretty, pretty fucking good. <laughs> yeah, Joker's two budget is two hundred million dollars, and the first one was, I want to say, it was like sixty or eighty million dollars. Yeah, sub a hundred. I think, yeah, I, think I had like a seventy, sixty-five or seventy million dollar budget. Sixty, sixty million bu uh, budget for the first one. There you go. Yeah, all I'm seeing is between fifty-five and seventy. So, yeah. was there a trailer released for Joker two? No, no. I think no, one is yet. coming up soon. Only uh, background stuff or uh, behind the scenes leaked images. There's a few official images that have come out too, but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Grendel Vivat gifted 50 memberships to the channel in the last stream, so I don't know if you're here now, but if you are, thank you very much for that. Then we had Bone Saw is ready for five dollars. What's the point of Oscars for best screenplay or best director going to the creatives if all responsibility goes on the studio? I think we've reached the stage where uh, we're talking to uh, Mr. Coker about to what extent writers can be credited for uh, good things, but not for bad things. Um, I think that's a fairly 
sane point. That, that was the general point of disagreement, as I recalled it anyway, which is that if you don't accept responsibility for what you do wrong, you shouldn't accept the plaudits for what you do right. And yet that does seem to be the mentality that a lot of these people have. Um, in a in a similar boat as this, I told Cynic, you guys should try and rope Joe Russo onto B Sup since he's, he's been going off on, on 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 you know Twitter as well. I think Lofty tried, but he said that he'd already done a podcast explaining everything, and that was good enough because yeah. you know he's God, and everything he says is yeah. true. Mm -hmm. I don't even know who this Joe Russo guy is. He just sounds like an absolute twat. So if he, he wants to come he did, on, like, he'd be more than welcome. Or something, yeah. Okay. He, he, he did, did all the, um, the Avengers. Directing. He did quite a few of the uh, Avengers movies. No, that's a different. No, 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 I think no, it's no, a no, different no. Joe Russo. It, he looks kind of similar from his pfp on twitter yeah it's not, it's not the same joe, Ru joe russo though i know i know sure? what you're talking about yep yep hold on okay yeah no i thought that too because i'm like I, I don't know a lot of joe russo's because so. if i if i search <laughs> joe russo director it's that twitter that also comes up as well yeah go to his well click on the link in his bio and it'll bring you to his page and it's like independent horror oh okay noted okay I'm sure he's not at all been, uh, you know, profited or credited off the fact that he shares a name with someone who's actually done big, important films. Yeah, I'm sure that's why his, uh, I think, Lofty or someone made fun of the fact that his posts get like no engagement, even though he has <laughs> that many thousands of followers. And it's probably because everyone follows him by mistake. <laughs> that might, yeah, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah, that's what I was, I was thinking. Oh, that's the real Joe Russo. He's a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Nope, uh, not that same one. Phone store is ready. Then followed up with uh, another five dollars. That Coco also doesn't know if the execs were forcing changes or if they were asleep at the wheel. We do know the writers have never had a good film. Um, yeah, that that was the point that came up. Obviously, you know, Chia wasn't here to respond to to any criticisms made of him now. But th that was another point that was made, which is that you know these guys have a long and unbroken record of, of pretty bad movies. Um, his argument was. You do, well, I think the first place you don't know how hard it is to get those, and also that you know your job relies on it, and you've got the reputation, and you've got families and mortgages, which I understand. Um, it's just that you know that's, as I think I said at the time, that's an excuse you can make the first time or the second time. But if you go back for the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth, and they're all terrible, I think it's probably fair that you take at least some of the blame for that, um, mm. given that you could be doing something else, literally anything else, except um, making Morbius, for example. <laughs> and the final set. From last week, when I've done the same fucking thing again. Oh no, I haven't. It's fine. It's all good. Um, gem my char for five communist dollars. Uh, but by this logic, uh, if you get failure, then isn't it everyone's fault? The writers, actors, director, producer, etc., rather than a process problem. Um, yeah, which I think is, is the same point as has been made previously. Yeah. Um, generally speaking, if you were signed onto a project as a writer. Uh, you are expecting to get the praise if it succeeds collectively, and I think it's fair to blame them collectively if it doesn't. There was then the conversation about whether it's fair to blame specific people if you don't know that they were specifically responsible, and I think he had a fairly good answer for that, which is, you know, you can't necessarily say who is responsible for every bit of the failure, um, just mm -hmm. that, you know, they were all involved. Well, he brought in up Rogue One. He brought up Rogue One, which is a yes, good yeah. uh, uh, example, because we really don't know how much of that movie is uh, Tony Gilroy versus who was oh, I forgot his, Gareth name. Edwards. What's his name Gareth Edwards we don't really know like the ratio to like who made what all we can speculate is off of like trailer footage in the trailers uh like some of the first trailers released uh there's a lot more set on Scarif um and that was before the announcement that uh Tony Gilroy is coming back or not coming back but coming in and fixing some stuff um so we can in uh, Gareth Edwards cut there would probably be a, a bigger climax or at least a longer climax. Um, but again, it's like we don't really know. And even the stuff released about the uh, production of that, you know, uh, like quotes from different people who worked on the production, actors, writers, uh, it contrives itself. And we really have no idea what went on um, in the Rogue One production. Uh, there's no there's no like cold hard facts to say ah this was tony and this was gareth um and it's uh it's it's it, there's scenarios where it's like you can't really blame specific people because you have no idea what went on in the background especially if people come out and talk about what came out uh talk about what happened in the background 
and they uh, contradict each other. Um, so, and especially like trying to blame single people, it can become a just a pointing fingers game. And sometimes that, well, most of the time, that just becomes a very unproductive conversation when it just becomes pointing fingers. Um, so, yeah, just yeah, imagine that we'd gone all out and said that Joe Russo guy, what an absolute shit! He's made this really shit film, and it turns out it's the wrong Joe Russo. You know, you can learn <laughs> from that mistake. Um, the last one from last week was from Larry for twenty dollars, who habitually makes us look, and indeed we have, albeit a week late. But we, um, we don't have to look this time. We don't. We want. <laughs> we want. Uh, that I think brings us to the the just the ones that we've got from today. If everyone's still got a little bit of time left, we'll just uh, go through those, okay. and then we shall we shall call it a night. Um, first up was from uh, Svictus Nepotism for fifty Swedish kroner. I find it interesting how almost every shape shifting character is now either non binary or gender fluid, and it feels a lot like a stereotype now. I think Dark Hour. Uh, touched on it a bit it's kind of what they are by definition uh, uh at least modern definition they're defined as that um again we haven't seen in the show yet it hasn't released so we have no idea whether or not it it uh like acknowledges this um set in the 90s um so it, it's up to whatever happens in the show of course i'm pretty sure this isn't like mass marketing material that it's like a non-binary character. I don't think there's been any clips released of the character, just like that concept art. Um, so, I mean, by definition, if they if they're a shapeshifter, they're kind of non-binary retroactively. Um, but yeah. Sorry, who was the non-binary character? Morph. I have morph. no idea. Yeah, morph. <laughs> the guy that morphs. Which is understandable, it. right? It's just that you're just yeah. waiting for the conversation to happen. So, so, do you have a dick or a vagina? Well, which one do you want? Um, I can have both. <laughs> That'd be so funny. <laughs> or a third, completely different thing that no one's yet imagined. I I'm I, I, I can have. I can have a vagina with testicles. That you could have any combination of things. Ooh. I can I make it a dog duck. that made the Jurassic Park dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next up, Wade on Bezevers for one ninety nine. Is it Dune or is it June? It is Dune, if you're being precise Dune. about it. Otherwise, it's a month. George the Chancellor uh, gave ten memberships. Thank you very much, George. Um, I was actually on George's stream on Sunday. He has a stream every Sunday, which is very fun. Actually, really good stream. So uh, yeah, if you're not already at the Slayer Nation on Sundays, go check it out. Uh, next up from. That one, Ginger Draven, for four dollars ninety nine. Little platoon. What is your favorite song to sing from Radiohead? Also, have you heard about the Smile? It's Yorks and Greenbush New Band. Glad you're back weekly. We are also glad we're back weekly. I have heard of the Smile, and I honestly don't. I don't know favorite. Like drunk karaoke is usually creep because it's really easy. Um, otherwise, it's whatever I'm learning on guitar at the time. Anything really. Anything is fun. Um, Andrew, pronunciation challenge of the week. Uh, Jan <laughs> Grabarski. Gr yeah. yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Grabarski. Oh, hey, yeah, Grabarski. That's easy. Uh, for uh, a twenty-five platoons. <clears throat> um, uh, how did you get uh, your avatars to look like that? I asked Gemini AI to make some of me, uh, but all were of color. <laughs> 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 you should do that for next stream. Just ask Gemini and then just put it in to the thumbnail. Don't don't acknowledge it at all. <laughs> um <laughs> next up from William Bezevers for one dollar ninety nine. This is like watching old people snug. I don't know what that's in reference to. I mean, that was you in trying reference to you trailer going. You working no, was, with uh, stream elements. But, but you'd think old people would know their way around that kind of thing by that point. If anyone's gonna be fairly competent and quick, it would be an old person, surely. Because you, you know they've got all the experience. Yeah, but you wouldn't want slow. to watch it, but but they're slow and their teeth fall out. Yeah, yeah, true. and saliva <laughs> and stuff. Oh, you know, so. that sloppy dabby though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vex, do you want to take this one for us? Sure. Uh, Hostman's Lounge for four ninety nine. Protesting mutants being registered makes just as much sense as emo bats finale. 
bracket plutes check your dms bracket <laughs> i have dms of course i fucking do i, I think he asked DMs. you to be on a stream a... that's why did he oh okay i'll yeah. check those later <laughs> which means as andrew knows in about six months i'll get back to you mm, um, yeah <laughs> amateur analyst would you like to take this one for us sure tgv monster for five dollars I don't want to ever touch 90s animated Spider-Man because I know they will undo Peter and MJ and knowing Disney they will adapt one more they will adapt one more day. Heck no. Oh no. <laughs> Not one more day. What is yeah, one more is, day? That is the uh, most despised story in Spider-Man history and it's, it was written by Joe Quesada who is like a uh, a brilliant artist, not a great writer, and he had the reins and decided to basically retcon all of these major events in Spider-Man's life that had been built up over decades of storytelling, and just big old fuck you, the fans like fuck you. Can you briefly <laughs> summarize isn't, what the story was? Isn't that the one uh, where it was uh, MJ? Doesn't MJ die from radioactive semen? <gasps> oh, that sounds fun. Shit, I don't like. I don't remember the deets here. Uh, if it was I think that, that's one I of them. Think that's that's God. Um, as far as I like the the chat will probably eat me alive for this. So I think what happens is he has to make some sort of deal with a person who's it's not Madam Web, but it's some it's like someone who has similar powers. It's Mephisto. That can, yeah, Mephisto. There you go. Like to, he has to erase like his marriage with Mary Jane and everything from history and basically reset back to what we know Spider-Man to be. Which is like the you know the loser in the fucking mm -hmm. apartment and just reset everything. How dare he grow as a character? Yeah, that's basically what it felt like for everybody. It was just like, yeah, cool. Well, that's too bad, isn't it? Mm. Is it better or worse than Spider Man Lotus? <laughs> it set the I actually have a, I have a precedent for Lotus. bad Spider Man storytelling. So I guess you know. It, it was the Spider-Man Lotus event. It had, yeah, it was the Spider-Man Lotus went down in the out. comics. Mm. So. Mm. Backface, do you want to take this one? Yes, Sean, for six normal dollars. Have a birthday beer on me, Cynic. Uh, thank you. I do not drink, but what I will do is put it towards my next dab pen. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Cynic, also for you. Uh, wait, I know we've said this name a million times. It's Julio, <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. Julio Rangel for $10. Yep. Happy birthday, Cynic. Awesome stream as always. I am legit terrified about Hollywood getting their slimy paws on Naruto. Is that correct? That was correct. Yes. yes. Nailing it. <laughs> I, I have no investment in Naruto. So yeah, I, I don't. I don't either. Um, oh, you guys are but... actually missing out. Oh my god! Like just how many episodes find... is it though? I mean, okay, like... it's a lot of episodes, but honestly, just find the essential episodes list, and it's maybe I would say fifty to hundred, if I remember correctly. The, um, that's the essentials. Yes, hundred. But it's it's worth. It's only like twenty five minute it's episodes. Seven hundred and twenty episodes long. Good grief! Uh, yeah, don't, you know what? I've lived. I've... <laughs> I've lived this long not giving a shit, and I think I'll carry on not giving a shit. But about oh, this, this is where you know boys become men. You know, okay, hold on. This is <laughs> another this, in anime. This is where boys become men. There you go. I thought you were going to say like boys don't become men until they've watched Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> this is my oh, rite of passage. I cannot be a man unless I've watched this bad anime from like two thousand. <laughs> well, I was going to say because I, I remembered for a moment that. Red Dead Redemption 2 exists. I was like, okay, I got it. In anime, there you go. But in video <laughs> games, boys become men in Red Dead Redemption 2. Amen, but in anime, it's Naruto. Okay. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. It is, um, it is another one for Cynic coming up. Uh, Sam Brooks for... Uh, is that Australian? Right? I think so. Ass Cynic. dollars. <laughs> for, <laughs> for 10 ass dollars. One for Cynic. Have you seen the Hatchet Victor Crowley movies? If not, I recommend checking them out. Good horror comedy with 80s style over the top kills. Also, Harmony from Buffy in the buff. Um, I have, I saw this pop up. I already wrote the recommendations down. So thank you very much, Sam. Maybe I'll have one of those on tonight. And finally, from Melvin Deeply for two pounds, are you ever getting brown on? And she Brown has been on before. 
Um, and I think he said he wanted to come on once June is out, so we'll probably have him back. And Stupenzo, we shall also invite. Yes, they will both be on uh, in the near future. Um, and that does bring us, I think, to the close of the Super Chats and so to the close of the program. So the final thing, as always, is to plug whatever it is you have to plug. And we shall go clockwise. So Amateur Analyst, where can we find you and what are you working on? You can find me on YouTube, um, just Amateur Analyst. Same with Rumble. Um, I have all of my videos up there, including a exclusive because YouTube hates me. Uh, I have a Top Gun video up on there, which I'm pretty proud of. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at um, The Literal Analyst. And I will be on Diabolical Souls presents on thursday nights we're doing arcane right now i believe we're on episode six this week that's at 10 p.m eastern um we're also doing edge runners after that but uh besides that i'm just plugging away on a project that won't come out anytime soon so i won't, <laughs> I won't give too many details on it now because i might not even do it to completion but we'll see oh, you have to finish otherwise it's just youtube equivalent of edging so you know you yeah, do actually have to complete it at some point um, all links, of course, will be in the description of the re-upload. The re-upload is the BSUP YT YouTube channel, so that's where this will be, hopefully, as early as tomorrow, if I get my act together. Vex, what is coming up for you? Uh, thank you for having me on again. Always nice to be here. Uh, I will be on MMM over on Cannoli Sasquatch's channel right after this, and we are reviewing Dune Part 1. Um, so Andrew and Bagface will also be there, um, and a few others. Lance is going to be there because apparently he had someone work on that film. Um, other than that, you can just follow me on YouTube or Twitter at Vex Electronic over updates, and I will have. I'm still writing out a True Detective Night Country review that I'm aiming to have out this weekend. Good stuff, Andrew. Over to you. Uh yeah, I'll be on uh MMM tonight uh in like three minutes, uh talking about Dune Part One. Uh and then Dune Part Two video will probably be next week sometime. Um and then Thursday I'm on uh with uh Jay at Desolate Souls or Diabolical Souls, um talking about Arcane as well. So good stuff. Back phase. Woo! Um, I just did a Dune 2 review for Scene Invaders, so that'll be up on their channel tomorrow. Um, and then I'm heading back to Cynic's Basement for, for, a, for a good <laughs> day of fun. Um, yeah, and then my channel, I just put up a video. Uh, I moved a video for my second channel, so if, if you didn't see it, it's a very long deep dive into the Jonestown massacre. So if that's your thing, feel free to, to check that out. And Cynic. Um, I am uh, releasing a, well, an actual review on Madam Web, where I actually like just talk. I go through the entire movie. I don't normally do that. I do like a plot breakdown, but this is basically like the entire the entire movie it's a miniaturized version of what you do a tiny version it's like 25 minutes um and then i'm doing a follow-up video immediately about like what the fuck sony's doing with their spider-verse because it sucks <laughs> uh and i also do want to tell everyone that like amateur analysts and bag faces videos are really fucking excellent like we have Vex on every week, so everyone knows like Vex's stuff is great, and Andrew's on every week too. But like these two have come on, and they put out really excellent content that is worth your time. Um, mm -hmm. So I would highly suggest, like, if you have time, going and checking that stuff out because it's it's really good. That Jonestown video, Bagface, mm. chef's watch kiss. It. Sorry, it's, what's your uh, second channel called again? Uh, it's just on Bagface now. I, I, I oh, decided okay. to give up on the algorithm and put everything on one channel and just destroy myself. So <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have fun. No, I, I second that though. Yeah, both, both very good creators. So like, subscribe, and watch all the important things. Um, I guess that's just me then. Yeah, I'm also doing Madam Web. That should hopefully be out this weekend. Um, it's a short one. So it's only like two hours and 30 something minutes. So, you know, <laughs> that's fun. 
Um, and then it will be June. June will be the next one. I'm probably going to do part one and two uh, because why the hell not? They're basically one continuous film. Don't know when that will be out, but the vague hope is that that will be sort of within two weeks of the Madden Web video. So uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there'll be a short June video probably on the second channel, which is Lost Chord, which will come out much more quickly. Um, and I, yeah, that's it. I think that's it from me. So yeah, thank you everyone in in chat for staying with us. Thank you to all the lovely panelists for being with us. We'll be back this time next week, and uh, we shall see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Timing. <laughs>